is the October 16th regular meeting of the Darien Parks and Recreation Commission. Up in TV 79, calling the meeting to order. Um, first piece of business is review and approval of the September 18th minutes. Um, hopefully everybody has had a chance to review them. Any comments or updates? I have, I have a bunch. No. Not a bunch, but... No. no. So, uh, and I'll, I'll give you my markup copy, thing, okay. but uh, under the update on Petri Improvement Project. So, um, so second, starting second sentence, the committee voted to authorize and you'll have to move forward to, that should be Zoning Board of Appeals instead of Planning and Zoning. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. And then moving on, uh, that sentence that starts one request being to keep the building in the same location despite not meeting a 40-foot setback for the property lines. Uh, it sh that statement in print parents should really simply just read, as is the case with the current building. Okay. Um, then, um, moving along that last sentence the re on that page, the reason for this request being uh, for this request being to expand the size of the beach with only having you know, 31 spots. The next statement, I, I, don't, I guess we probably pointed out somewhere along the way, it just seems like it's a little bit of a kind of non sequitur of the vegetation. Okay. And that really should just we can keep it in, or otherwise it should really be read some form or another that the vegetation is at the edge between the the extension of the beach in the parking lot. I think I couldn't figure out how to word that, so I tried to simplify it, but if you want me oh, to so yes. take it out, I can just take it I out. I can just take it out, yeah. Okay. I don't think. And then, um, then moving along, let's just see what my chicken scratches are saying here. Uh, members of the committee met with, um, I just inserted the name <coughs> of the individual that we met with. So it's Danielle Missile, I'll give you the spelling of her name. Okay, uh, great. Of Deep in Hartford uh, yesterday. Uh, and then at, uh, environment with the Land and Water Resources Division, after walking through the current plans, no objections were raised, period. Okay. Uh, instead of saying uh, there was support, mm -hmm. I, that's a little that's fair. maybe kind of extreme statement. I wasn't claiming she was supportive, just that she didn't raise any objections. Okay. And then the next one, uh, the members also consult consulted with um, a representative, some, uh, from FEMA. Uh, was that FEMA or was that DEEP? Yeah, so I actually got rid of, um, let me just see what the heck I did here, the members, uh, current plans. It was the uh, representative from FEMA who stated according to historical, yeah, so uh, current plans. Yeah, so it really should read, and I'll give you my markup, it should really read, after walking through the current plans, um, the representative from DEEP uh, stated, according to uh, historical photos, the beach showed no evidence of going away. Okay. I'll give you, once again, I'll give you my markers on that. The next statement I just took out, the FEMA representative, the representative is also, confer also confirmed that they would never approve the removal of rocks from the water. I think we got into a little discussion, that, and I think Pam might have just clarified that there was some discussion around the rocks on the south beach, and uh, the the deep representative simply pointed out that's just the topography and the geography of what's at that beach, and it's not something you could take away. If you try to take that away with sand, and the sand would just get washed away. So I think we'll just take that away. I'll cross that out. Uh, Mr. Scrow next described efforts of taking the target parking spots. Um, let's just see, we're at least 45 spots available. Uh, yeah, so historically busy days at the beach, including July 4th, where there are at least 45 spots available, as well as July 13th and on Labor Day, uh, where an even greater number of spots uh, were available. And then uh, the last changes I made was the last statement there, this, the parking lot was designed poorly for proper drainage. Uh, I, I certainly don't remember saying that, but I think what we're saying here is the parking lot, parking lot drainage will be assessed as part of the project. Okay. So those were my changes. I'm going to take up that last word in that paragraph because yes, I think that should be. I did. Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise, I think it should be per view. Right. So I, I take I struck that out. Okay. Uh, last, uh, yeah. Very minor thing. Um, I think I had on page five under correspondence received from residents. Um, 
think it should be distributing, not distributed. Um, okay. And then regarding um, on page six at the top, regarding the um, special meeting we'll be having for the parks tours, I guess remind the commission. I reminded the commission, not that commission, the commission of the parks tour schedule for October 26th, and I would say for the commission period to tour the park. Now, for the commission to tour the parks as a group and end at Weed Beach for picnic, and then say um, the invitation has been extended to the RTM Parks and Red Committee members. Okay. And of course, it would be open to anybody else in the public who wanted to attend. Um, okay. Okay. Then we can have a motion to accept the um, minutes. As Second. As amended. As amended. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Second. Amy. Okay. All in favor. Okay. Uh, we are going to or need to switch the agenda this evening. Um, Dan Biggs is on site, but for reasons that I'm not at all clear on, the Parks and Rec Committee of the RTM scheduled their meeting for this exact time. So he is upstairs updating them on the beach project because the gift will be presented to the RTM for approval on Monday night, so they need to be ready to rock and roll on that. So he should be down about half an hour, so we will be, move him and Neil a little bit later and jump forward and start with uh, Sophie Cirillo from Friends of Woodland Park. As everybody um, may recall, we had agreed that it would be a good idea to get to know our friends from the Friends groups better um, and make sure that we establish lines of communication with them, hear about what they're doing and the uh, wonderful support they provide in our park. So Sophie, thank you so much for joining this evening. It's thank you for nice to me. meet you. and. Hear about all with the, the, with the podium work that I sit here. You can oh, sit here with the podium if that's. A, I can sit, just sit if here. If you feel comfortable yeah. sitting and joining, yeah, that'd be do. great. Thank you. Watch, watch the cord. Yep, got it. The many cords. Okay. So, thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, thank you, Pam, and thank you for inviting me this evening to share a little bit about Woodland Park. Um, my glasses on now. Um, basically, I don't know what you know about Woodland Park, but I'm here to tell you a little bit about uh, what's going on. Uh, and for some of you, you that don't know about Woodland Park, um, just give you a little brief overview. Um, it is 64 acres and is located between West Avenue and Middlesex Road. It is the large, largest public open space, nature, preserve, and dairy in. It's a very valuable asset to our community. It is actually really the perfect place to appreciate nature because everything is so intact and very natural. Uh, the park offers a variety of flora and fauna, wonderful trails, ponds, brooks, and places to sit and reflect, and a peaceful place for time for oneself, family, your friends, dogs. What people do not think about sometimes is that Woodland Park actually cleans the air and cools the air and actually acts as a natural sound barrier. Um, we have 95 next door. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on, um, I could talk about the history of it later if you're interested, but I want to talk more about our wonderful, wonderful uh, <coughs> volunteers and board members. We are consistent of uh, about eight right now, and we're about to enter into uh, uh, admitting two more in our fall meeting, which we're really excited about because they've exhibited incredible um, above and beyond participation um, in helping to clear up the park and also just overall you know, awareness so, going forward, um, just know that the Friends of Woodland Park, as we are called, uh, we have a long-standing commitment to ensure that the park remains intact and safe for our nature and enjoyment. 
So we, the friends, want to maintain this park in its natural state because Woodland Park, as I said, is very, very precious. So the friends basically have maintained the trails, cleaned up deadfall, pond cleanup, footbridge, up repairs, up, updating the website currently, Facebook, donated benches, organized animal cleanups, and invite the community for various events. In addition, we're getting the younger generation involved. And this is really important because the younger generation is going to, when, and I believe that they are really committed to now more environmental uh, studies that, uh, and they're very excited to be a part of it, that they really want to take part in Woodland Park, whatever it is that they want to do, whether it's cleanup or studies of the environment, uh, we're very excited, as well as uh, to give kudos to the Boy Scouts who have been a tremendous help uh, in, over the years. Um, and we're also want, I also want to acknowledge uh, one uh, exciting thing that uh, currently Eagle Scout candidate Cormac Brown is uh, creating new signage and trail map for our park, so we're really psyched about that. Um, while there's always something to do in the park, our focus has been on Old Maid's Pond currently because of various storms that we've experienced and, have, and trees have fallen into the pond. So, you know, you know, I know that Parks and Rec have been a, a crucial uh, help in that initially. Um, we felt, we, we witnessed more deadfall going on afterwards, which is unbelievable. Um, so we kind of took it upon ourselves to try to help out, and I have pictures to show when you're interested. Um, basically, it, the, now that the situation with the pond is it's completely dried out, of course, today with all the rain, <laughs> different movie, but um, it is, there's no more water left at the moment. So we don't see any ducks or, or uh, any animals or turtles or anything like that, such, or, uh, such things. So it's kind of a, um, disappointing, but hopefully the winter will bring such more moisture and rain. We really desperately need it. Sophie, is that where the tree was in that you wanted to cut down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the other one fell. Yeah. And then we had it, you know, um, it, it was just, it was not enough for you to come in, but it was enough for us to kind of manage ourselves. Okay. So this is the one where at one point Jim Plum couldn't get out there because it was Correct. frozen. Yes. But now it's all, it's all dried up. Okay. I mean, I looked at, I look at it every day. I drive past it. So. Okay. So at this point, do you need his help? with that now that they can get to it? Um, no, we're good. I mean, I would definitely let you know um, if there was such an issue, but I think we're okay. okay. But if, I mean, basically what I was trying to get to is that, um, you know, what is our relationship with you and uh, the friends? Because, you know, you've been a tremendous help in getting that done. Uh, and, you know, we rely on you for when safety issues happen. So, like, I look at the park and say, okay, uh-oh, there's an uh-oh, you know, really, okay, we need to get in heavy equipment that the friends can't do. You know, we can't, you know, hire these big machines and things to remove big branches, trees, whatever, and such. So, um, but anyway, so basically, we are going to continue just to do, like, minor things around the park, uh, the pond at the moment. Right. trying to clean it up because it's really a mess but um, and it's really time consuming um, but we're happy to do it you know it's uh, it's part of our job um, as a team um, and as you know like it's a vernal pond so you know it goes up and down you know nothing we can do about that um, so the basically that's pretty much it and we're just really grateful for your help and um, we look forward to working with you in the future because um, we don't know what's going to happen right. you know with climate change and all that and these storms um, so uh, we have to keep an open dialogue and we are willing to work with you and you work with us on that I was curious do you do the friends groups carry a budget are they all different I mean do you have a budget we do we, it's not a big budget um, we're doing fundraising we have a big uh, fall me meeting coming up, mm -hmm. which will enter more board members, as I mentioned, and we're going to discuss future events for fundraising because we really do need it. Okay. Yep, yep. 
And um, so we're going to brainstorm on some. We do have some great ideas. Um, and so that will happen in the next month. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just... You let me know, too. I can always announce it publicly. Okay. Too. Great. That Thank you. Um, so one other thing. Um, the friends wish to recommend that um, we discuss, perhaps, uh, considering ent the entrance parking lot. Um, it's kind of been a situation where we've noticed that cars have been increasing, and in people, which is great because it means people are visiting the park, but then people are parking on the street on Middlesex, um, and so therefore I believe we we maybe to consider moving those boulders. Um, if you've ever been to the parking lot, there, move the boulders out of the way and create a little more space, maybe perhaps some paving, just to make it look a little more established. Something, you know, we've been thinking about for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, and, and also, you know, I know that the kids want to come, and I don't know if, you know, schools want to come and bring their buses, but that might be a little overwhelming. But I think that I know that the Fitch Academy has come um, and taken a bus and taken a ride over there. And I don't know where they parked the bus. <laughs> Hopefully it's a safe spot. But um, they're very also very interested and expressed interest. Um, so basically recommending enlarging and moving the boulders, perhaps cleaning up the, and making a more defined parking lot would be really ideal. I don't know what that entails but and how we can go about it but that was something we would love to recommend um, uh, the commission will be talking about it much later this evening you probably won't want to wait us out on this one sure um, we're planning a, a parks tour on october 26. okay um we'll be talking this evening about we're not going to be able to hit all the parks but i know my suggested agenda definitely has woodland on it so that would be something we would be able to to take a look at thank you and have you show us while we're there sure. um, we'll frame up schedule um, check with me or Pam after tonight because I'm trying to lay out sort of a tentative time frame of where we want to be with the park so okay. so I just have a question but I mean I think this is fantastic that you're paying attention but I wonder how a board gets created for a public park and but and then you mentioned schools coming just to the park and I just didn't know if we need to treat that a bit differently since you have a board mm -hmm. just the over traffic and should there be a cost associated with that if schools are going to be coming and just how our connection with the board a board being created and you mm -hmm. talked about people joining the committee and just how that all kind of works since it's a public park well to me this is the first time it's ever happened so um we were not informed when they were coming so yeah. i only found out afterwards which is fine but uh you know and going forward any school that uh that wants to, and you know, uh, show interest needs to come to the board, and of course Parks and Rec as well, because I think we all need to know and sign off on it, uh, because you know we have to allow for security and space. Yeah. Who owns the liability if something was ever to happen? We did. Question. We do. We do. <laughs> so then we absolutely need. Yes. But yeah. these are Darien residents that are coming to use the parks, so I'm not sure. Oh, I guess we not. Would it's say, bitch. Oh, yeah, right. It's not it's bitch, right. Right. someone. You know, it's there. It's a small group of ch children, I mean, like, uh, students. It's not exactly the overwhelming parking lot. And they're supervised very well. So, uh, so there's no safety issue that I would love to Yeah, I mean, it's just the, it's just the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, dropping yeah, off a bunch of vehicles and stuff. And we've done programs there with our scouts, and we always have to have a lot of supervision. Like, there's at least two adults. There's, you know, yes. and the program is well, just that there's, structured. like, rules, like, sort of guidelines oh, yes. in place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm never concerned about that. Because I always know that there's supervision. Oh, that's good. Absolutely. Yep. I don't think we've ever had to require like a group to come to us and say, "Oh, we're planning to use uh, this," unless it's a huge, large-scale event. Like when we do service projects, we sometimes let folks in right now, and we did scouting things. But for the most part, I mean, we kind of police ourselves. We we make sure the parking lot's limited. Like at Woodland, we'd make it like we didn't have uh -huh. carpooling and things like that because we know there's no parking lot there. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Any other questions? Can we talk a little bit about? I know you know been on the commission forever, and one of the biggest issues that we faced at the is the dog situation. Yes. Can you update us on that a little bit? 
Um, to oh, be honest, I should say off leash dog. I shouldn't say the dog situation because dogs are allowed there on leash. Yes, that's the law. Mm -hmm. On leash, um, it hasn't changed. It's mm, the same. It's pretty bad. Yeah, and I really just wish to say a kind of reminder to everyone in the community that you know we love dogs. We are a dog loving park here, <laughs> um, but you know they're still lots of dogs off leash and mm. it's unfortunate because they run off the path and they destroy the you know the environment um, and also picking up after your dog um, we've seen some things that are not pleasing to the eye um, and I wish people would uh, gain more a little more respect um, in that in that uh, realm but you know you know we have the dog warden I spoke to him, um, I don't know, a couple of months ago, bumped into him. He was there, you know, but i um, not sure how effective it is. So, um, but I, I really appreciate people coming with their dogs. I want people to come with their dogs. You know, it's not that. It's just, you know, when there's a small child, for example, and there's a big dog, and they get jumped, that, that, that concerns me a little bit. You know, that sort of thing. And I mean, most dogs are just perfect and fine and no concern. But uh, there, there is that issue. And it's ongoing. And quite frankly, I uh, certainly don't want to upset the dog community. You know, because there is a <coughs> lot of dogs in this town and we love them. But, uh, you know, wish there would be more respect for the leash situation, you know. <coughs> Um, so. The only thing, other thing I wanted to talk about, you mentioned parking, and yes. you must know that in our master plan that is addressed. I mean, okay, yeah, I did mention so it a long time ago. It's been <laughs> off the radar again, based upon the survey and other things. So it's in here yes. to make a better parking on both sides of the entrances. So okay, that yes. That be a future priority that the commission can address. Yes. It's great for you to yes. bring it up again. Sure, yes. of so. course. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to keep it simple. You know, what, what's really the priority? So that would be a priority, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know how we all, as a community, can solve the dog leash situation. So that is something we have to think about. There was uh, fun, some kind of event. A high school student did something at the park recently called, was it dog? I got the Yes, yes, there. I know. Did I was there for that. How did that go? And it, was, it was very well done. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the dogs were on leash. Some were not. Um, Sophie, what was the event? It was called. It was D -A -W -G It was called the D A W G it's a club dog dog, it's a dog event. <laughs> rescue is for raising money for rescue animals. Oh, I see. So, yeah, and it was nice. It was who was nice. who was in charge of that? Actually, um, is that in town group? It, it's a high school student. High school student. Yes. DHS high school student. That's right. And. Um, they live close to the park. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was in Amy's daughter. Yes. Amy's Avatar. That's daughter. correct. Yeah. Yes. It was really well the done. Dogs were organized. Leash, I believe it can be. Yeah. yeah. And she had a flyer. Yeah. She was yeah. very professional done. Yeah, yeah, but the dogs were out. Not all the dogs were on. There was one or two. Interesting. The rest were on. There was maybe one or two not. Yeah. So. How much interaction is there between you, Sophie, and you, Pam? Like how often are you guys in touch with one not another that about much, things? But I would say that we we email when there's yeah, situations, and certainly there's been times where she's been, you know, very pleased with service, and there's been times where she's been frustrated mm -hmm. because yeah. perhaps we couldn't get something as quick as she would have liked. Is or, it a couple of times but, a month? Is it once no, a season? No, no. I think as incidents occur. Yes, as you know, incidents occur. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know we don't. I mean, or she has a need for, say, I remember at one point it was the hill that Chris Bummer was helping you with. Yes, the stairs. That's and right. So she'll keep me connected in on terms big of that. stuff. I mean, yeah. little things. <coughs> it's no need mm -hmm. to bother Pam. She's got her plate full. <laughs> but I think that when it comes to big things like footbridges, like replacement mm -hmm. of anything, mm -hmm. such as that, or because uh, we just did some, you know, we, we did the walk with Chris right. Bummer and and then. I believe we're going to have to replace the footbridge at some point as well because it's really in disrepair. So I'm letting you know now. <laughs> <That's coming up. laughs> and for instance, we just got an email from um, a separate gentleman, um, another gentleman in town, a resident, who had some concerns about um, 
a big large rock in one of the past. So Jim was out there today with his crew, um, trying to take care of that. Which was where? It was in Woodland. I just oh. I can't recall the exact okay. location. A little bit off path. Yeah. There's other thing like there's another thing I noticed like when you drive down Middlesex, there's you know you have when you're walking like on the path like where I see the kids walking, you know from middle school mm -hmm. or two, um, there are these. Um, you know, there's this like wooden fence that I guess protects people from falling into whatever is down there, maybe because it's like a drop off or there's like a little brook that comes mm -hmm. through. One has been re beautifully replaced, I mean, a couple of years ago, but there's another one that might need some repair. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's falling apart. It's just, I don't think it's a big deal, <coughs> but I did want to yeah, sure. mention I forgot about that. So um, I, I don't know if that's um, something you're you can help us with, mm -hmm. or something you would expect us to do. Well, we we need to know where know where the location is, exact location. Is. Okay, I'll I'll uh, get back to you on that. Sophie, how long have you been doing this? Doing what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just four chair. years. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's, it's the years are blurring now. Um, three or four years. Wow. So yeah, it's been great. Very rewarding. Meeting That's a lot nice. of people. Mm -hmm. Learning a lot about the environment. Learned a lot from Chris Fellmer, you know, giving him a lot of credit. Same here. Yeah? <laughs> he's pretty good. He knows what he's doing. We also work together with Sophie on the Eagle Project at Cormac Brown, so she knows that we, we are yeah. the, if anything is substantial that needs to be done at the park, she has to go through the department, and also she's our liaison with the Eagle Scout projects mm -hmm. that we work together. So she's it's great. in constant communication, copying us, making sure that oh, yeah, of course. Know, we're not, you Fantastic. know. So we have a good working relationship, I think, with that. Yes. And so if any ego projects need, you know, people need suggestions, if she has something, we try to offer that too yes. as an option. So That's Yeah, nice. we're, we're always reaching out to each other, with, especially with Troop 53. Um, they've been tremendous, really, and um, we're so fortunate to have them to help us. So, any more questions? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 And it really, I think, exemplified Thank what you. Neil's project did at Wheat Beach. It was great. It was really an honor, I have to say. That was really tremendous. Um, it, it turned out beautiful. And I was really excited to be a part of that um, development, um, you know, in that regard, you know, in the graphic design department. <laughs> so um, maybe for the next realm, yeah. I'm available. Thanks so much Thanks. for coming. Thanks. Of course. Thanks. Watch, Thanks. Your, watch, your, watch, your, watch the course. Yep, <laughs> I got it. I'm going to go back to my seat. <laughs> Come here. Uh, Thank you. You. Okay, next up we are going to continue our discussion on the Nature Center's proposal to PNC. I see that Leela is here. Uh, we have asked. The Nature Center representatives to provide us more of a visual on the, the usage as proposed or whatever. So hopefully, uh, you know this around. I've got some extra copies. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for doing this. This really helped. No, it, this, it this was really helpful for me. Too, so really thank helped you for asking. Um, as opposed to anybody else don't draft this special. Oh program, yeah, which I agree. Yeah. 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 Um, it's stable funny, so it'll drive you a little nuts. <laughs> if they're coming around that way. They're coming around. No, it was that one. It was, she's going to print it out. Oh, I have one. Does anybody need one? I have one. I have one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but, but what this provides is um, each topic that's touched on in the permit request and Effectively, what the permit, you'll see the second column from the left, is what the existing permit allows, what actually um, happened in 2019, and then what the request, what the request is. Um, so, do people want to just talk quickly run through each item? Um, 
quite a few, or just ask questions. How would you like to approach this? Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I was thinking more questions. Like, okay, that's I mean, fine. Just because, okay, you know, Go ahead. I think so many of these things were being done now already, right. so mm -hmm. it's not like we're, I mean, I guess for me the biggest issue is safety and making sure that anybody using the space, whether it be people from Nature Center or just residents that want to use Cherry Lawn Park, you know, making sure that we protect it for that. Um, um, for your, I guess it's uh, down on the farm event? which had 1,800 participants this year, which is amazing, by the way. It was, I, it was, was that parking all done on site? I know you said you, you, you parked on different parts of the park and stuff. So no, the parking was intended to be on site, but right. because so many people came, right. people started parking on Brookside, and that's right. when it got dangerous. Right. And so uh, at that point, we had closed the, um, we had closed the, the police had closed down the park parking right. and asked people to come back in an hour. Right. But if you have kids in your yeah. car and you're, right? It, yeah. it, it, it's hard. The kids are in. Everybody's right. happy to go. So what we've been thinking about and talking with the police in particular about is crowd management and whether we have to cap it, which is certainly a possibility because the park can accommodate all those people, but the parking places can't. Um, if we can hire a professional parking company because the police that weekend are not able to give us enough people. So we have quotes from two of the firms that we're going to be sharing with the police so that we can work with them. Better parking is going to make a difference, making better use of the space for parking. There's a lot of wasted space last year. Um, and then ultimately, again, we are probably going to do advanced sales and cap it at a certain point. So. We haven't come to a final conclusion on that because we're still working with right. We can't close the door. We can't close the door. Um, I, would, I mean, I would lean towards, I mean, definitely figuring out before we permit that to figure out what the parking would be. Yes. Because, I mean, we do, we, you know, we've done the Wheat Beach Fest, and I know we do off-site parking and do the shuttling. Right. I, I just think something like that might be, something it, like with a, a solid plan before we approve that would be much, I'd be much more comfortable with that. With that being said, I don't want to limit your ability to bring a lot of people that kind of really enjoy the park and what right. your programs. It sounds like the program itself can sustain this number of people. It's just that the parking can, right? Uh, no, I would say the event has grown in size. I mean, yeah. I think but your event is good. Come. Like you can you can accommodate. Yes, you can accommodate. The, just the, the park and the event can accommodate right. more people, but the parking is an issue, and as a result, right. safety is an issue. Right. So, so that was my biggest kind of for me, like a one day like. Yep. The safety of that. Like, how do you get fire trucks in if someone's hurt or EMTs or whatever? That's we have those plans in place, and we're okay with that piece of it. But we are, we are, we feel the exact same way. And so, we have talked to First Congregational Church about them giving us their parking lot area for a shuttle stop. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of different ways to skin it, and we just want to do it really thoughtfully. So, before we do anything with down the farm, we'll be talking with. Pam and with you guys about what the plan is. I, so I would like to see that as cut plan. out from this approval of process for us because I think if, until you have that place, I think you need all of this other stuff done and I don't want to hold you up on this, but I think you need to figure that part out separately and not have it as part of this blanket permit that you're asking us for. Does that make sense? Because I you don't have a plan and, and, and for us to right. then hold you up on the other stuff, which sounds pretty critical too, mm -hmm. is not fair too. So, I mean, maybe close to the event, you know, to hear from you like maybe six months before the event shortly, um, yes, honestly, because that's coming up right, right. Today, right? right But if you could think of a way to do it, like with some time allowance for us to think about it, mm -hmm. I think that would be really helpful for us. I think, I think that's probably a really good solution because at this point with the transition at the police department, they aren't really, you know, they've been great about wanting to help, but they, we haven't been able to get a meeting um, about the traffic patterns and stuff with them. And um, it would give us some more time to do that as well. So I think, I think that's a good solution. I think that makes sense. I have a, uh, I guess I have a similar view, but, um, so maybe I'll just weigh in. So first off, um, it was great hearing at our last meeting your presentation because you know I'm not entirely aware. Of, it's not a park that we, as a family, use all that much. Mm -hmm. So 
Mm -hmm. um, so my observations were that um, things are getting busier there. Naturally, it seems like it's just getting much more use from members of the community as well as folks from outside the community. Um, your operation is getting busier. And um, it seems like it's hard to predict, I guess maybe the simplest way to say it is, it's hard to understand how we can make a decision now that will have any longevity to it, in my own mind. Because things have changed in the kind of near past, and it's likely to continue to evolve and change in, you know, in terms of activity at the park. And you guys can correct me, but it does seem like it's a busy place that's getting busier. So I guess what I came away from last meeting and now and having thought through it a little bit more is, is a different, maybe it kind of lines up with what you're saying, Susan, but my, the formula that I came away with is to leave the status quo in place for, the, for a year. Now, I don't know how this affects you with p and Z. I'm just kind of, kind of sharing my thoughts from a Parks and Rec's perspective. Leave the status quo in place. Have you do all of the things that you've talked about doing in terms of managing traffic flow through all of these the different events, whether it's kind of moving parking around during school days or managing down on the farm a little more differently, maybe working closer to, more closely with Pam, trying to get the help of police, maybe other third party parking assistants. Mm -hmm. But having said all that, I think the key here is to do a parking study. And I think there was a kind of a notion of some of that that kind of emerged when we did the master plan, I guess. We were thinking of maybe different kind of addressing entrance and egress at the park, kind of. And so I'm just thinking, like, I don't feel like I have enough of a crystal ball to say, okay, we're going to make a decision now, and that decision is going to be a lasting decision that's going to be a valid decision for the next five years. I mean, we may be back here next November or, you know, you know, the following year having a similar kind of conversation. So I just think, you know, we're coexisting, you know, we're, we're neighbors in a great spot. Um, so I, I guess I would just throw that out there. I mean, I'm open to a lot of different things, but I just feel like I'm, I'm uncomfortable saying that I know the right answer to give Leela for this problem right now. And uh, anyway, so it's, I guess I am suggesting like kick the can down the road a little bit, but I'm suggesting that doing it in the context of spinning up a traffic study, you know, through Parks and Recs, to take a good hard look at it over the active season, the season when you're most active and when things are most active at the park. And then we'll have the, you know, we'll have the findings of that, and I think we can make a much more informed decision. So I just throw that out there. Um, once again, I'm just one one voice here, but I personally I don't know it well enough as you guys all do. So I, I just feel a little uncomfortable with, with my lack of understanding based upon just what we talked about the last meeting and now to kind of weigh in on and vote on something that you know under the circumstances. So once again, just one voice here. Um. Hi, Lula. Thanks for being here. Um, I, I agree with a lot of what we've been speaking about. Um, nature centers do have my heart. Um, I do have my Parks and Recs Commission hat on tonight, and I agree with Mark. I think we need to just pause and take a look at the whole park a little bit more seriously. We've been focusing on some other parks, and I know Cherry Lawn is going to be coming up on the schedule. So I would hate to make decisions now that we had to rethink later. That being said, I do think you're functioning OK now with what you have, with some adjustments, as you've been creatively suggesting. Um, so I think your, your point is, is prudent and thoughtful. Um, and so I, I do. <coughs> and hopefully that works for you. So that's basically keeping the status quo for one year. So basically we're approving everything they're requesting because they're approving, we want to approve, yes. like basically, that's, because basically yeah. they've had what we allowed in 2000, which is way lower or not non-existent. Now they're asking for what they are already pretty much been doing, right? Mm -hmm. And we're saying yes for one year. Mm -hmm. We approve what you're doing and what Pending you're doing. Pending a traffic study? Pending, and then we're going to reevaluate depending on traffic studies or whatever might come up from your experience. And I mean, I guess that's the option. I mean, we have to. Yeah, and then I think, you know, as part of that, the condition has to be that you, you're agreeing that you're going to, there are some things you guys are going to have to do that might make life a little difficult over that year in terms of kind of balancing parking and moving things around, maybe. I think we talked about a few different things and looking for alternative ways to kind of manage traffic flows during the peak days and 
pickups and drop-offs and things like that. So maybe, I don't know if we have to revisit some of that and just kind of nail some of that stuff down or just leave that to you and ask you to work along with Pam on that. But I think there were some suggestions and it seemed like you had some thoughts in different ways of maybe having your staff during those peak periods park somewhere else or you know, have them move their cars at a certain point in the year. Yep. Once again, I, so, and Pam, I, I, let's, let, I, I feel as though we are, we are pretty good about the parking and the traffic, except for down the farm, which we know is an issue, and what we worked on this summer with summer camp, okay. right? Yeah, because that's yeah. not what the, this form doesn't indicate. It indicates all the differences, but it doesn't indicate issues. Yeah, mm -hmm. and by the way, I'm, I'm referring, yeah. I think, the kind of, what I came away with seemed like the, the kind of the crunch time is really the summer camp period. Right, the drop-off. Of early, early morning summer camp, yeah. early afternoon right. you know, summer camp stuff. Right. Aside and from and down on the farm. And it's staffing, you know, where are they parking, because they're well, right. not, not available. So but during that period, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think, interestingly enough, like this shows what you're doing, how you've evolved, but from a glance you can't say, oh, this is the one that has issues, or these are the ones we need to work on. That's a good point. Maybe you need to maybe highlight which one, what, what are the issues we currently need step. to work on. Maybe to just maybe right. go back, reflect, and maybe, maybe you and you mm -hmm. can work together and just say, okay, so maybe you know, it's just those two. It was in your presentation. It was implied in your presentation. Right. Here are right. the issues now. You know, we can right. agree, and these are the and this is what we're going to do to kind of mitigate these issues in the interim. Something like that potentially. Yeah, I think it would be great to come back a year from now. Now that we know that these are all the programs that she. Has. Well, maybe even have a conversation. You know, leading into the start of the summer <coughs> camp season, maybe come back. And you know, in this way, we could say, okay, you know, this is, these are the things we're going to be paying attention to, and this is how we're going to deal with them. Mm -hmm. and this, this is our is, plan. These are the steps we'll mm -hmm. take in the event kind of something gets out of hand, or something. Because right. we recognize, I think, I, I recognize that I, I'm suggesting kind of leaving things in a way that may not necessarily be ideal. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what the ideal is. I think I think that by the by the end of the summer, this part, the, at the end of this year, we had figured it out. And we had, a, we had a system that worked well. It took us the weeks of the summer to get it right, but we do have something that we think we can implement well and work next summer. So we can go into next summer feeling good about that. We can always make it better, and we should be thinking about that. Um, yeah, down thought, the farm to I me is the one that's the, you know. I thought the feedback that I got, though, from the other part of the conversation was that that park is just, but in, by its, on its own, getting busier and busier. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Right, so there. you may have worked it out for the Nature Center, but it sounds like there's a lot of other stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. I know. completely agree that the... And that's, and that's really what I'm kind of, I think, kind of picking up on. Right. This part, maybe it's a bit of a blind spot for us. Sarah, but we would be approving this without any restrictions on the parking, correct? Like, we don't have anything in here that would, in terms of not taking out down on the farm, but during the summer camp, we're not going to put any restrictions. Well, just to clarify, on I them, have, like there's nothing in that we would be voting on tonight where we would be putting restrictions on them. Because I understand the way this process works is we are actually not the approving party. Okay. It's planning and zoning who issues the special permit. Okay. So the Nature Center applied to planning and zoning. However, they effectively kicked over to us and said, "Well, before we consider this, we want to hear from the commission." So what would we be taking action feel. on specifically? Like, I guess whether I think we it's support, we, it's really whether we support this or not. Now, Pam, you checked with Jeremy because one thing, if I understood you correctly, one thing I was interested in, I said, could the commission come back and say that we effectively would be comfortable short term, short term mm -hmm. for you know a year or whatever until right, we, can tra can we can, do, we can do traffic studies or whatever. Um, my concern being that. We have a master plan for the park with several different scenarios. Mm -hmm. Commission, whether it's this group of individuals or some future, you know, members of, you know, whoever how the commission has taken up, will take that up at some point and decide how work on Cherry Lawn gets prioritized. And the concern would be that, you know, the special permit has been changed permanently, um, which could hamper things that we want to do in the future. Oh, um, so that's why I was exactly. do it, sort of do it short term. But I thought you said Jeremy said. No, I, 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 Jeremy was away. I had a conversation okay. with Fred, but Fred didn't feel comfortable answering that question. Oh, he didn't feel comfortable answering it. Okay. No, because he said basically it's the it's the PNZ Commission 
my members of the board who are going to be listening to traffic authority, <laughs> parks and recreation before they make their decision, whether they feel that you know, safety, safety is an issue, parking is an issue. All right. I would um, think that I no am, matter. Oh, I, I am looking at this, um, you know, and seeing it in this form, it just is a little clear. And I, I did want to note that while we're saying it's status quo, it really isn't. There are quite a few increases here, mm -hmm. so it's not really status quo. But that's the way it's been for years, though. It's not. That's what she, we're saying. When we say status quo, we mean that's what she's been. They've been doing for years. Yeah, that's what I mean. Years. I think the operating outside of the I, room. Wait, just just let me. Okay, so the status quo um, since. Uh, we had a 2000 permit, but the 2019 actuals, it's um, like if you just look at the increase in numbers on, on line three, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're increasing from 2018 to 2019. That's an increase in time, times available, right? If I'm mm -hmm. reading this correctly. Like instead of. True. Those, right. We had more scout troops in so 2019. More scout troop, right. right. So, and there's. Um, she's asking for 12 additional children um, for larger troops in on line three, right? So that's not really status quo. That's a that's a that's an ask, right? I just want to be clear what yeah. we're looking at. So I guess what I would I guess where I was going with it. <coughs> no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right that. So currently we host as many as we have had 30 people there. We have had 21. So the 24 that represents what we're asking for. It is it is the high side of what we're doing, but it is the reasonable number for kids who can come. Okay. So this does represent right now. We're not saying we want twelve addi we don't want thirty six. Twelve addition. So is that kids. what you were doing in two thousand eighteen or is that what you plan on doing in um, two thousand nineteen? Twenty. Twenty. Excuse me, two thousand twenty okay, I see. Two thousand nineteen. Right, right, right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just want to continue on the two thousand nineteen schedule. Exactly, okay. and the net change isn't in addition to that. That the net change was just meant to describe the difference between the second column and the fourth column, which is a, a change, an addition of twelve. Kids. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. that's helpful. And I guess Sarah, to your point, I guess just helping me think through this a little bit more, more articulate about it. I think the ask is, I'm asking that the town parks and recs would do a traffic study, and I'm asking that Leela will come back to us with a little clearer understanding of the steps you've taken to kind of mitigate any issues, whether that's on event days, hiring a third party to manage traffic flow, or your coordination with the police, whatever those steps are, back to Pam's point, like maybe more clearly articulate, call out what are the kind of issue points here and what steps we're taking in 2020 to mitigate any issues recognizing that we don't really have a solution yet. We just have a kind of hold in place. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. It does make sense. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm not sure how it, how, uh, how it relates to moving this forward. So we, I completely agree with I you. I guess what I'm really saying is I don't see how I can vote to move it forward without more under, a better understanding more. of traffic at Cherry Lawn. Do we agree to... But, but the traffic that? doesn't affect the programs that we do all the time. We have the, the down the farm, which is a parking issue, not a traffic issue, right? That's a... Which well, it's traffic... Par it's I mean, it's cars and cars have to go somewhere. If we separate that, I'm not sure if there are other issues that have to do with a traffic study that would affect our current operations here. Well, I thought during camp days in the early mornings, I thought from what I understood, we had cars backed up onto Brookside. We did, and that, but we fixed that problem. And so Fair we enough. don't have that anymore. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying I'm OK telling you let's proceed through 2020 in the same way. But before we can say we're kind of memorializing a change to what was originally permitted, I would just like to see it traffic study that helps us understand <coughs> not only what 2020 might look like, but kind of based upon that, what we anticipate 2025 might look like, or 20, however far out that study might be able to give us a, a view on it. Just, right? Does it make sense? If, if I could just jump in really quickly, I mean, I, I'm a board member, and I mean, we, we literally have a capacity to what we can do, right? We have a cap. We don't really have so much space. And there are rules that are applied to us from the state as to how many children can be involved in the program. So if there's a concern over how long and how far and how much we can grow, I would just like to raise that concept in the sense of 
we can't keep growing exponentially over time forever, right? So just to raise that point. Mm -hmm. So are you at that cap now with this? I think Leela can speak to that a little more clearly so as far as what those numbers are. But we are we are not at our cap for the nursery school licensing that we get from the state of Connecticut in order to run a daycare facility, because we keep our numbers below what their cap is by three students per class. So we're allowed to have 12 four-year-olds in a classroom. With one adult, we choose to have nine four-year-olds in a classroom with two adults. That level of ratio will not change as long as, you know, the, 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 as long as the organization has been there, our ratios have over, always exceeded for the fact that we're outside. So there is growth potential there, but there's not the room to accommodate those kids in a safe way. Could we have more scout troops if we were able to offer more badge things? The numbers of scout troops, we could. There aren't that many scout troops in Darien. We only serve Darien. Right. So it comes to a point where you, unless the scout population blows up, <laughs> you know, um, I don't see that changing. So we are, we are operating at our current maximum capacity. Mm -hmm. Pen, yeah. Okay, yeah. so just getting back to this, just so I'm clear, the only thing that you are increasing are, um, is on line nine. We, we seek five opportunities per year. Is that the only kind of increase to what you're... What that would be an project? increase from the original permit, but would actually be a decrease from 2018, and it would be pretty similar to this year, 2019. Okay, so you had five opportunities in 2019. In 2019, we, we posted four of those. Okay. Of sort of not for profit organizations wanting to use the Nature Center. Okay, gotcha. The year prior, we did, a, that looks like eight. Okay. Part of our business model and our strategic plan is that, that is, that's off mission for us. It's not a good use of our time or space. Okay. Um, and even though it helps our bottom line, we're, we want to restrict it to five or less. So this year, our goal was to do five or less, and we've done four. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for clarifying. I still agree. I think we need to. I think we need to try to say a little bit more information. Um, but I, I would vote for her to proceed as she's doing. Yeah, you guys are doing that. Wonderful. Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'd be the first to state. I defer to you guys who know the park much better than I do. I acknowledge I don't know what that. Was, might, so. yeah, we just, kind of yeah, we touched on this a little bit last time, and you weren't here. And um, Eric is not here, and we talked about it. I think it's unfair for us to talk about parking um, without having a conversation about the soccer people mm -hmm. because they impact the park way more than the seven weeks of this summer camp. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing a parking study, it needs to include them. So I don't think we should hold the nature center out well, on yeah, any of them. It seems our public park is, is continually busy, so we never know during the heart of the day, whether it be morning, noon, or afternoon, that the public comes out. Mm -hmm. Right. And all of a sudden, there's no parking there either. So that's that is the challenge. When you say right. hold them up, do you mean hold well, them up from getting from my, them. from going to because you know, we need to give them our blessing to go to PNC to get this permit updated. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we should hold. I, nothing that's on here is new. I don't think. I think it's what they've been doing for years. Um, and you know, the parking is an issue, but it's not an issue that's specific to the nature center. No, but I think that's what makes it kind of a little complicated, right? There, there are multiple right. kind of But why and, should we hold them? <coughs> I think because well, they think have budget issues and things like that. Yeah. When I they're not significantly changing anything that they've done as a practice. Yeah. I was actually suggesting not to hold them up. Yeah. Now, I don't know how that works with P&Z. We have to get an, an right. answer. I, I mean, I can't, we, I don't know the answer, but I'm suggesting but not I, to hold them up. Right. Basically, give them our green light to go ahead run 2020 in the same way they ran 2019. So we can take a look. Closer. Maybe yes for a bit more right. interaction so we can kind of just you know learn a bit first. more as we're kind of going through this with them and then get a better understanding of things. But I'm, like I said, I'm Lila, is that you guys. going to work for you? As long as it works for planning and zoning. That's what works Which for we us. don't, so, unfortunately, don't know. Uh, I would be hesitant. I mean, I think the difference is the soccer people lease the fields or whatever we have an arrangement and they come, but there's no official permit. In terms of a special permit, oh, there's a permit. They could they all from the PNC. Take out. No, no, not from PNC. I'm talking about a PNC special <coughs> permit. They wouldn't so. need one. Right. That's what I'm saying. They wouldn't need one. But but the nature center has a special permit as part of right the agreement that the town allowed them to 
build a building in our park and a permanent change, it's, it's, it's that. It's, it's, it's not up permanent. to us. Right. It's, it's if we're not up to, to us, but then it's up to P&Z. And then if three years down the road or two years or five years, you know, the master plan gets picked up and we determine that there are other elements of the master plan that we wish to place in that park, we will have limited ourselves by the special permit, which I don't know that would be revoked. If I can say, we, we are not asking to use any more of the park than we currently do. And we Understood. are asking to be permitted to, we, to be permitted to use nature center spots. I mean, Cherry Lawn Park spots That's that right. do not belong to the nature center. So right. if there were to be a pool, a dog run, and uh, something right. else in there, in the, in the same park, this, that wouldn't be affected by this permit because we're talking about operating inside our building and on our parking lot and then when we need it asking permission to use the park's parking lot and paying for a permit for that. So if there were other things to be built in the park it would not be affected by this as, yeah, as far as I understand. But it can, would be the extent that you are now using our overflow park. Only if you permit us to. If you didn't. If you didn't permit us to, we won't. On the right? We basis. ask for a permit to use the overflow parking, and then we get it accepted, and on, we pay for that. Is that for a specific event or for on an annual basis? Specific event. Okay. So, so I thought, so, I thought yeah. the overflow <coughs> parking was being used for the okay. instructors in the summer. Seven weeks. And we pay for that. We, we ask and we pay for that. Understood. Yeah. But theoretically, I wasn't going to use the P word, but I will. If at some point in the future it was determined that in fact Cherry Lawn was the place where a town pool would go, we would need parking and we would have already given you the right to use that parking, I think. No, we wouldn't have. Because we would have to ask you every summer to permit us to park there. So this special permit doesn't give you... No, there's, none of this is asking for any of the parking spaces at Darien's in at Cherry Lawn. No okay. And we wanted to be good neighbors, and certainly this is what's clarifying this, is because that's why I like the whole thing of having a chance for a year to work with you on it, because it's not something that we were was on our radar to make sure we're looking at when the parking lot is jam packed. Mm -hmm. So now, of course, there are gardeners and our you know we have, we have to have eyes out that are saying you know ninety per, ninety percent of the time from April to September, it is a zoo. Like, we don't really know that. We know it is. Yeah, no, it's know, true. And it's anecdotal, right? Right. So right. Is the traffic uh, study something that could be in the 2020 budget for the town? I mean, would we have an answer next year? No, that would be, that would be July 1st, if it was, if it was yeah. to be paid for in our budget. But, so we may have a couple of years before we have information. Well, I, yeah, I guess I would. Two things. First, I have a question for you. If, if P&Z were to go along with, our, if, let's say we were to make the recommendation that I suggested and P&Z was good with that because we don't know it, would you be okay with that? Because I know that it's hard for you to be comfortable if there's an uncertainty whether P&Z is going to agree with it or not, right? Because you don't know what, what course we, have, the, we, do, we believe they're okay with it right now, but who knows, right? You never know. Right, right. Um, and so if you... In other words, are we comfortable with this? Yes, we are comfortable with the with what we have asked for. With, no, with the proposal that I suggested, the approach that I suggested, to keep the status quo in place for a year, understand things a bit better, do a traffic study, get the results of the traffic study, and then... I suppose that, that I, we, we, we would like to move forward. So if that is what it takes to move forward, and we can do that in a year, I think that's terrific. That as long mean, as planning and zoning is right. okay with that, I know. Right. That doesn't mean that even if we suggest that, that's just that doesn't mean that planning and zoning will go along. No, of course not. Right. But I, right. I, I but try I to understand right. where the hang-up is here, because I, I, you know, because certainly what I'm suggesting, which I don't think is preventing the Nature Center from operating in 2020 the way you've operated in 2019. I think all it's simply doing is withholding, I guess, the approval of Parks and Recs to kind of memorialize the, to change the permit, right, to change the components of the permit. So uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, I guess, I wouldn't be in favor of what I'm suggesting if we didn't feel like we could do a traffic study in 2020, because then we're just pushing back 
a couple of years, and then I think we should just move on to things, I guess. In other words, if it's going to take us to 2021 to do a traffic study. It would always, it would, it would depend on getting an estimate for a traffic study. I'm sure it's different. And We've it's done, a traffic parking I've done study. I've through Dan on near water, and we didn't budget for it. We had it in our budget, and we made it work. So, you know, we would have to get an estimate for that to see if that could take place in the spring mm -hmm. of right. 2020. And just to be clear, it's not. I, I know it sounds like we're, I'm highlighting the nature center, but I'm highlighting the fact that it's a park that's shared amongst many constituencies, and it's getting busier and busier, <coughs> from what I understand, by the year. So that's, you know. Anyway, I seem to be monopolizing this conversation. Here. <laughs> uh, Mary Louise, Mary <coughs> Well, <coughs> I'm just concerned with the, the use of the overflow parking during the summer, <clears throat> and uh, I would not want to make that a permanent. Which we all agree this is not making it permanent, right? Because we are not memorializing parking spots. If the, if the town declines our request to have overflow parking in Cherry Lawn Park, we will have to seek parking elsewhere. Right. But how will that affect your program? It would not be convenient, no, no, but it wouldn't. That's not you guys. You know, it, that's not really what. Okay. That's a really good clarification. I guess I was completely involved. Kind of the distinction between the, the traffic of the parents and the ins and outs and the parking. Although mm -hmm. some of the parking is very short term, as you mentioned at the last meeting, where people are parking, walking their mm -hmm. smaller children, and it's very quick in and out. Right? Mm -hmm. so there is some of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we approve it, like? with the current, what they're doing, like current status, until we make a change? Like, you're saying, we're not sure when this traffic study is going to happen. It might happen in 2020, it might be 2021. Can we go back and talk to PNZ and challenge this permit, or amend it? Mm -hmm. That's what I would ask. I wouldn't worry about a certain, like, I, we're doing this for a year, we're doing, because we don't know, because mm -hmm. the future is pretty unknown at this point, right? But I don't want to hold them up either, and I don't want to hold us up discussing this about this like, little piece of minutia that's kind of kind of holding us up now. Mm -hmm. So I think we should go forward and you know approve it and say at the current levels that they've been operating under, and maybe that we as a commission would like to seek to amend it in the near future if we need to, based upon a traffic study that will be planned in the future. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have that kind of language because. We don't know. I mean, I, I just I feel like we're talking in circles, right. here, and you know, I, I I think we need to just move on, you know, and make this work for all of us. But, but I mean, do you yeah, see what I'm saying? Said a different way, we're yeah. saying we can be comfortable allowing them to functionally operate the way they've been functioning with the, out, outside of right. Well, yeah. In other words, they've been out, they're, you've been op operating outside of the permit for a number of years now. Yeah, but they need a new permit to op operate in this, you're saying. They need it, because we can't say to you, keep on staying on the outside. It just doesn't work for them, right. for budgetary, I mean, for a number of reasons. It's very uncertain for their budget and other things. Right. So I think we should go ahead and approve it the way they presented it, with the, with the exception of down on the farm, because I think we need to think about that. And have them, and then con convey to PNC that we really want to reserve the right to amend it in the future if, in our future traffic site, it turns out that We've just made some mistakes here. I don't know that you can do that. Though. You don't think so? I mean, I, I find it so. I the find problem is we don't know what we don't. Well, have. they have a 2000 permit that we're revisiting now. Why can't we say in 2021 <coughs> that we're going to have a new permit or amend it? I, I, I I'm just, just I don't know. I'm just I, saying. I just don't know. Like, does it mean was I the one expired? The I mean, they were in violation of it, obviously. But so maybe another another way to say what you're saying is to recommend to PNZ that they. The PNZ grants kind of an extension. Well, it's not a really extension an because extension. They're, they're, permit, they're in violation of their well, it's, uh, uh, Not an extension, extension, but a. Uh, a right, do you see a, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a revision for a limited period or something. I'd why just like we, to add, I'm oh, sorry. Why don't we just do it for, why don't we say this is fine for the next year and then we'll review it in a year? But, we'll have to but, but, the other, but I'm just saying that now we're saying that we're going to do something in a year and I can't prom we can't as a commission promise that we're going to revisit it in a year. Yeah, and now we're going back and say we just want to do another year. But yeah, we can just say in a year we want to just move it along again another year. I think if you look at what, what this permit is doing, a traffic study 
will not affect what is happening in this permit because we are using our own parking except when we're asking to be permitted. Right. Mm -hmm. So a parking study is needed. I agree. But how we operate will not be changed by what the findings of the parking study are. The parking study says we're going to get rid of all the parking spaces at Cherry Long Park. We then, as an organization, will be going, our numbers will be going lower, and we'll have to find alternative permit parking to pay for, mm -hmm. which we do right now. So it's, I see them as separate issues, even knowing that we are part of the park. But remember, we have our own parking lot, and we use it. Right? And we'd share that with the park. So we are overflow for the park as well. And it adds to that space. Yep. I just don't so, think so that a parking study is going to affect the numbers of Boy Scouts who can park in the afternoon. Because we can accommodate all of those Boy Scouts in our own parking lot. We're not, we're not looking for that so overflow. Lila, I, think we, I think we understand that you guys are functioning fine and within this and within the park. I think our issue as a commission in, and and um, caretakers of Cherry Lawn, we're concerned with the overall park and setting a precedent by saying, yes, we agree to this, that it's going to affect us later down the line when we want to make amendments or changes based on other special, special interest groups, right? So we're not worried about what you're doing and we think it's fine and this, I, I shouldn't say wait, I'm yeah, not worried about but what But I, I agree with but, your character. But what would be an example, just so I can understand that So better. in two years, if we decide, you know, we need to put it in the pool, mm -hmm. is that going to affect, is our relationship, is, is our approval of this going to affect future decisions of the public. Yeah, I mean, another example. But it will not you, you affect know. our operating system. It's not going to affect you. Which is what we're... It's th that's what the commission is, is concerned about. So it's not that we don't... Uh, it's not that I'm not open to all of this and, and saying, yes, you should move forward. I just think for the safety of the commission and the future commission, we should have some re revisiting time noted that we take another look. And I think it's fair to just say, let's let's look at this in a year and see how it's going. Well, I mean, one, one thing that we know is that we are anticipating an increase in the population in the town, you know, as a result of building that's going on in different locations, you know. So, and Lori, I think you had those numbers. 322 apartments, and I read about another 20 or so that are proposed. Yeah, so, so just, just simply by virtue of an increase in the population in the community, that. I don't know what effect that can have, but it does sound like. I agree, but I don't. But I still think I'd like us to be really clear how how separate those things are. There will be increased use in the park, right? And they can use our parking lot all they want, and that's fine, right? As long as there's an open spot, that parking lot is available to anyone. But it will not change how the park is used, the, how we affect overflow parking in the park because we have to ask permission. So when. Park and Rec says, no, it's too busy. We can't, we have too many people there. We've done our traffic study, and we can't have 30 cars in the overflow spot every day for the summer. We can't have 30 cars there. Mm -hmm. But this can still go forward with you having complete control over traffic and parking in all of the public spaces, whether there's a pool, whether there's a, you know, whatever you put in there. That is a separate piece from how we operate because we already have to ask you permission. But there must be a reason, I mean, when the permit was granted in 2000, there's a reason these numbers were selected. Because that's what they had hoped they could do as a nature center, as a new nature center in a new building. These were numbers that they were doing at the time for the population at the time for the programs. Yeah, and we have this, grown since then. Yeah, I think this is sounding, and I think I can see there's a concern that's growing here that sounding as though we're trying to limit that maybe part, part of the discussion is kind of suggesting limiting the activity of the nature center. I, I'm not at all about that. I, I'm just kind of responding to what, once again, what I heard at the last meeting, that there are these windows of the day that have nothing to do with how many parking spots we have available, that have to do with the amount of traffic that's flowing in and out that could pre present a safety issue and it presents an issue around accessibility for folks who have nothing to do with the nature center who want to come and either and just enjoy the park, so um, that's what I'm responding to. Like, and I, and I could be off, I could be off base, by the way, because I'm not there every day. And well, if I, I'm off I base, I would just was, ask anybody to correct me. I feel as though that was particularly in reference to camp pickup and drop off yes. times, 
which we then were able to resolve by adjusting our, our systems and doing things differently. So I don't think that that Well, you is resolved a, it for the moment, but if there were an increase in traffic as a result of other activity, I don't know if it remains resolved. That's the kind of the issue that we would, we would have to adapt and change. Right, right. but I also don't think we want to get in a situation where you have, Parks and Recs has to deny you the ability to use, you know, to, to operate in a way... I don't think anybody would ever want to see that happen. I mean, I think what we want to do is get to a point where you, you know you can comfortably operate exactly the way you want to operate, and you don't have to have that hanging over your head that someday someone's going to, you're going to pick up the phone and ask Pam for help, and she's going to say, sorry, the population's increased in town, and this is getting real busy, and there's more activity at the gardens. You can't use those. I, don't, I think we want to avoid that ever happening. And I think you're kind of suggesting that's an option that's available to, park, to the commission, or Parks and Recs, and I'm suggesting, I don't think that's a good option. We never want to see that happen. So I'm just trying to find a way to create some certainty around kind of the use in the park. I know we're going around in circles here, but um, I, I certainly want to be clear. Like, I, there's nothing, it's a wonderful organization. It's a wonderful, um, it's just, you know, it's a great contribution to the town that you're making. Nobody wants to lose that. But I, and I think we want to just find a way to give you as much certainty so you don't have to. But you have to tell us if you're comfortable with the solutions. I think we've got a, a lot of solutions we've talked about here. Um, and one wild card I wish we had a better answer on with PNZ, you know, PNZ's position on this. We don't have that, so that makes it a little more difficult to. Lori, can we vote on this? Yeah, yeah I'm just very much. Green light Yeah, very much. Full time. Okay. Well, we need. We need a motion. We need someone to make a, a motion. Uh, sorry. Oh, I have to say what it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know. What do we decide on? So that are we agreeing to extend the permit then, as per the 2019 numbers on this document? And are we going to extend it for one year? Or I prefer Susan's option, which is that we weren't going to put a time out that we could revisit it at some point in the future. I think the trick is we, we, we don't know the ins and outs of the P&Z program. But if we limit it to one year, we don't know if P&Z will let you do Well, I think what we're, so. I think the, it sounds to me like the motion is to recommend to P&Z that we allow the Nature Center to operate the under manner. the current permit. And no, under, in the manner yeah, that they've been operating, which is not under the current permit. Well, I'm sorry, in the manner, under the current permit. We have an application for a new special permit, so what we are asking for Park and Rec is your approval for them to consider that special, that request to update our permit. That's what I understand the process is, that you guys say, yeah, you can consider this, it's fine. But what I'm hearing is if for us to recommend for planning and zoning to consider that permit, that that would be a permanent change. What I'm hearing is that the commission isn't ready to <coughs> say that we consent to a permanent change. Is that what I'm hearing, the consensus? But the 2000 permit hasn't been a permanent change either. If she's getting a new permit. So I'm saying that, you know. No, I think the 2000 permit was permanent. Yeah, but now she's getting a new one for 2019. No, so I it's not annual. It's just no. a permit. Uh, Things change, and so, the, so we. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's never permanent because you can always put another permit in that is an updated permit, I would think, because otherwise, why would they change, you know, 2000 and then now we're at 2019. There's no time sequence. We'd say in 2021, the permit could be a, a different permit, can't we? Well, I think what you're based suggesting is the, 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 I don't think to... So. But our permit so. request would not change, based, or just so you know that, right? Yeah. Again, we could add 100 spots or we could remove 100 spots this would not change how we are asking to operate as a business, knowing that ultimately we affect the traffic in the park and that we need to work with Park and Recs, ask permission from Park and Rec, and work with Park and Rec on being sure that we're responsible in how traffic flows. I think the permit stays in place Until definitely the unless someone asks to change it. So can we ask to change it, or can we? And I don't know. Do we have to and ask for change, or is only the, the permit extends to the nature center, not to the commission? So I what don't was our charge from PNZ? How about we find this out and talk yeah. about it at the next meeting? The only problem is, is that hold all them these up. Yeah, we can't hold them up. <laughs> hold them up. As, 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 they have budget issues, right? 
As an example, though, we, um, not knowing about this 2000 permit, it just came to our attention recently, which is, sorry, I'm the president of the board of the Nature Center. So we just found out that we were in violation of a permit because we weren't aware of it. Um, in the past, like last year, during camp seasons, Pam got a few complaints from people trying to access the park with their dogs and not liking to be held in this line, and we immediately adjusted it. So it didn't have to do with the fact that like, we had X number of campers inside for us to want to accommodate rec you know, recommendations by park and rec to make changes. We immediately want to because we want everybody to be safe. And so I think like saying whether there's 22 kids or 23 kids in the permit isn't really what we're getting at. We want to work collaboratively, collaboratively on the parking issue. And if you improve parking, whether it's a one-way street through the Cherry Lawn, it only serves to help us. It doesn't change our underlying operations. It's just, you know, you're, you'd be making an improvement. The overflow spots we could deal with, you know, having our camp <coughs> counselors park elsewhere off-site and shuttle them in for camp every day if we had to. That's, you know, again, as Leela says, we, you approve that annually for us. You can always say no, you could always give us half the spots, no spots, but it doesn't really change the number of campers that are coming into the camp. So, I don't know. I don't, for the I don't planning see it so long here. Permit that we're mm -hmm. seeking to increase, think, which has to do with our numbers of, of people and also the numbers of events and stuff that are there. That we have inclusion. I actually think we need to get more information from planning and zoning. We need to have a conversation with them and really understand the process and the um, yeah, Unless we yeah. just unless we just say fine, let's revisit it in a year, and then they'll be able right. to no, do what they need right. to do, and 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 then we'll just revisit. So we're splitting the baby. I mean, so, I, I I agree with you in theory, and I understand what you're saying. I think it's a good point, but I also understand what. Lori's saying and our concerns. And this is sort of just kicking the can down the road. <laughs> Hopefully get some more information because there are multiple constituents. So we are currently on the agenda for planning and zoning next week. They were able to uh, open it so that we could be heard this month. Uh, if it was not, if they were not able to hear it, then we're going to have to go through the process of reapplying mm -hmm. and sending letters to all of our neighbors and uh, going through the process again. So I just ask the question again: If you were able to operate in 2020 under the same parameters that you operated in 2019? with the interaction with Pam and Pam's kind of agreement that she'll allow you to use the overflow spot, is that acceptable to you? Yeah, that's exactly what we're asking for. So, you know, maybe the thing to do is to, one of you guys accompany Leela to planning and zoning and kind of explain our position to planning and zoning and see if that's acceptable. I'm not sure. I don't know if I need a vote now. It's up to you. But is Jeremy is available? Mm -hmm. I think it's just best if I have a conversation or you want to have a conversation with Jeremy yeah. and really yeah. understand. Yeah. And then how do we please this? So should we leave Could you it? approve it pending? Uh, I think we need to take a sense of the meeting yeah, that we are so supportive so of the Nature Center continuing that would to allow operate you to um, in the yes. manner that it has in the last few years, <coughs> acknowledging that it was outside of the authority of the special permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We would agree to continue with that until we can really understand better the um, special permit process and really what types of studies and find out what the concerns of PNZ may or may not have in terms of traffic. Mm -hmm. It works it's very well. well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the spirit of the meeting is that we will allow them to go forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Lou.
There's a um, sign-in going around. If you plan on speaking, you just please write your name on the clipboard. Yes. That's fine. Just if you can put your name on there if you plan to speak, it helps me. So it's very cashier. You get your name correct. Thank you. Thank you. seeking clarification of the building program for the project. You clarified that, and since then we have developed the design for both the landscape and civil engineering components as well as the structural components. And I will go over the design we've come up with in a second, but first I wanted to briefly over give you an overview of what we've done recently. Um, so, without going through each of these, um, <coughs> basically we had a series of meetings with Darien Planning and Zoning staff, with the Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection up in Hartford, with the State Coordinator for FEMA, uh, with our structural engineer, and with the building inspector here in town. And as a result of those meetings, we have confirmed that our design conforms to <coughs> FEMA, which is great. Uh, we have determined that it <clears throat> conforms fully to the Darien zoning regulations except for two variances that we are going to be seeking, which I'll describe in a moment. <clears throat> and, um, and we've determined that it conforms to the, the state building code. So we feel we're, we've made a lot of progress in that sense. Now, in terms of the next steps, uh, and I apologize, this is actually a presentation we gave to the building committee last week, so we, we've already taken the first step, and that is uh, we had a preliminary review with the Architect Review Board <coughs> last night. It was an informal meeting uh, to sort of familiarize them with the design and get their feedback, and uh, I think generally speaking it went very well. They, we did here are some comments about certain elements of the design that we will uh, take into consideration with the building committee as we move forward. Uh, and so tonight we're meeting with you. Our goal is to submit the application for the to the Zoning Board of Appeals for the two variances next Wednesday. That's the deadline. And the that public hearing in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals will be November 20th. So just before Thanksgiving. Assuming we receive the variances that night, we will then submit the formal application to ARB on the 26th of November, and we would sit before them on the 10th of December. That would be the formal presentation of the project to the Architectural Review Board. Then, um, depending on how the process goes up to that point, I think we, we would like to be ready to submit 
the formal application to the Planning and Zoning Commission, which is uh, for a CAM review and a total review of the project, in uh, December. But again, that's subject to receiving approval from Zoning Board of Appeals and the Architectural Review Board uh, in November and December. And sort of simultaneously, Dan at Weston and Sampson is working on an application to the Connecticut uh, DEEP. It's a COP application, which is a certificate of permission to, um, <coughs> to proceed with everything in the design. So now, um, this is the site plan. I'm going to let Dan uh, take it for a moment. <coughs> so, to give you an update on what has happened since our last presentation, um, the biggest piece uh, is basically along uh, the front beach. Uh, there was a discussion about having dunes in this area, uh, about readjusting uh, the parking stalls here. And basically, what uh, we're proposing at this point is that um, we're keeping the nose in parking. We've adjusted the drive aisles, shifted down and giving more land back to the beach. And we're suggesting that the dunes be uh, held for another time. So um, due to various evidence that we've seen and uh, the committee was not comfortable with proceeding with the dunes, um, that uh, proposal now is to have a landscape buffer and additional widened beach in this area. So this dashed line here that I showed you last time is the current edge of asphalt right here and actually along the back beach as well. Um, so we're actually adding more beach area on both sides uh, with the trees as you, see, as you see indicated by the circles here. Uh, we've looked at the parking all areas and one of the, uh, the variances that's applied for is going to be to, uh, to maintain the current uh, parking stall width, which currently is um, non-conformance with the parking dimensions, so that's when the variances were applying for. If they deny that, then uh, the parking count will be decreased by, um, I don't remember, total stalls, but maybe 14 or so. Uh, if you look here, uh, right here is the dimensions, so um, looking to have that. Uh, and then uh, basically all the other features we talked about are still in the project, so there's reconstruction of the boat ramp, uh, there's planting along the road edge street here. Uh, there is the plaza seating picnic area on the beach. Plantings along the edges of the parking area. Uh, a paver area to delineate between the parking and the drive aisles to give a different aesthetic uh, change of the overall parking area. Um, the one thing that we, I don't recall if I mentioned this last time, but there is uh, a ponding, I would say, or backflow a flooding event that happens during uh, high tide and a full moon event. Uh, just by nature of the elevation of this invert and the drain grate here, actually water back waters back up into the system and then ponds and pools here to give a little bird bath during that high tide period. So uh, one of the means to repair that, to, re to mediate that issue is to put in uh, basically a check valve that's in the pipe. So, now to get too technical, basically when the water comes up, uh, there's a little flap that stops water from backing into that pipe, preventing it from uh, backflowing up into the parking area. So it's a, it's a common means of preventing that from happening in beach conditions, beach settings. Um, otherwise, from the site, m most of the other components are pretty much what you've seen, seen last time. Uh, and, uh, and, can I just ask yes. a question? Is this um, valve? The thing that isn't working currently. Does it exist? There does, oh, it doesn't exist. exist. Okay. It's proposed. It does not exist. Correctly. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's most it for the site. Can I ask one more quick question about that? Um, so are you saying that all the water goes to that drain? Is there, right? Because that's where the drain is. No, there's or? a couple uh, like drains. Most, like, there, yeah, it's the lowest. It's the lowest. That's why you're seeing the water. The elevation of uh, this invert. Right. Um, backs up when the high tide, the water covers over the pipe basically at this point, uh -huh. and the elevation of this drain grate is below the high tide elevation. So when water is at this here naturally rising on the beach, this point is lower, so water is 
seeping back up just by nature. So it's like a big hole. Yeah, just also it's just to be like clear, we're not suggesting, and Dan's not suggesting that that is the only source no, of water no, in the know, parking lot. I mean, I, what, I think what, we're, what we've learned is that it's contributing. How much it's contributing, we don't know how many gallons per minute it's you know, flushing up into the parking lot. But it's certainly, it, it's, it's a contributing factor in terms of the volume of water that ends up in the middle of the parking lot. It goes with the tide ebb and flow. You can see it pretty, um, it's pretty evident by the, the patterns of the sand that's ponding around that drain. I mean, how does it be that that is the lowest? <coughs> uh, there are others, there's one, two, and I believe there's a third here. Uh, but that just is the lowest point, and water seeping up into those. It's like a, ho a hole in the hull of a boat. Yeah. Maybe it's a simple way to explain it. You know, water comes up, you'd like to believe that it's kind of coming up from the sides. In this case, it's actually coming right through the middle of the hull of the boat, if the hull is the parking lot. So would that ever go come up, though, if you redid the parking lot? Well, with a check valve, that prevents yeah. the water from coming up through the hull of the boat. But that area would never come up, you're saying? I mean, like that whole parking lot. Are we well, could you could oh, you could you're saying, it a little yeah, bit. You're saying it could be elevated. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, that's another, yeah. that, that so, would be looked at as we go. So this grading. area, basically, <coughs> this generally where I'm pointing to, yeah. um, water flows from this point of parking lot and this point to this drain. Mm -hmm. It is lower, as you know, when you drive over, depressed a bit. If we can raise that drain grape, it just reduces the side slopes a hair. It's going to help because... It just all comes down to what is the elevation of the drain grate relative to the tide elevation. Right. Uh, if, if there's no valve. I mean, if there is a valve, it's going to minimize that backwater <coughs> effect into that drain. Yeah, I mean, the other, I guess the other option there is recognizing, you know, this is a parking lot at the beach, and it's going to have water from time to time. And the question, the you know, flip side of that is, how quickly does that parking lot drain off when the tide recedes? Right. And I'm I think thinking what, if we're ripping up that driveway, I mean, that parking lot, why not? Work on some of that grading issue, mm -hmm. like yeah, just, right. you know, yeah. make it like easier not to have that happen because it sounds like it's going to always become a bowl otherwise. You know what I mean? Right, but you know, once again, okay. the question is: Do you attempt to kind of raise it high enough so it'll never get wet, or do you attempt to kind of grade it in such a way where when it does get wet, right. it drains off as quickly as it possibly can? What is the grade difference between there and the rest of you know? What I mean, like you know, when she stops. I mean, what do you think it is? Like a foot? Like we're talking two feet? I think it's less than a foot. So that's not a ton in mm -hmm. for that area. I mean, yeah. I just I, so so just just perspective. If this line here, high tide, right. just, just for example, right, right. Um, this here that there's it goes from this elevation up, right. right, to a curb, drops down six inches, and then pitches down to right about here. So we're talking a matter of overall a 24 inch goes up down elevation difference because water is not frequently flowing over this edge of the sand well, that's the, um, it's that's currently it. not from what we've seen evidence that it's flowing over that edge right now um, no. in a high storm <coughs> event it can yes but um, the idea is that this we know that this is lower than that elevation right. of the high I guess tide. my concern is that you see, that's the exit of the park. And if there's a lot of water there, people are, you know, not going to be comfortable driving through that water to leave or to come in. Issues like well, that. Well, just as an example, I was there uh, last, I feel like it was the 13th, last, last week when we had this, when we had this full moon high tide situation right. and there was water on the beach. And we had, we saw f photos circulating yeah. Oh, yeah. with a great deal of water on the beach earlier in the day. I was there at 1.30, uh, sorry, on the parking lot. I was there at 1.30, I think the high tide was mid-morning, I was there at 1.30, and that parking lot, there was some puddling, but that parking lot had, was, was essentially, there was no flooding there. I mean, you, like, you could drive into any section of the parking lot without being in an area that was flooded. But why wouldn't we want, is it, are we not allowed to do the grading? No, I'm not no, saying we, we don't want anything. I'm just saying, to, is there a restriction on it? I'm not saying no, we're not. No, we can. Yeah. We, we can. are, yes. Okay. So we just haven't gone through design the parking yeah. area. To sorry, to modify the camera area. on this. No, no, it's a good such point. such a sensitive it's point to our community. We just want to, you know, we, we want to find a solution that's the lo a long-lasting solution as well. I think the public needs to know that we're thinking about it. Strong, of course, you know, that's a good point. Strenuously, really, because I think it's really important because I think it does impact the use of that road and impacts the use of the beach. So we should figure it out. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Thank you. Oh wait, are you still with parking? I just had one more question, yeah. sorry, it came up. 
What happens to handicap parking? I know you're talking about the variance to make the spots smaller. <coughs> but what happens to our handicap? Because uh, we do have a lot of seniors in town. Yes, so when we restripe the parking lot, right. we are to meet the guidelines for right. quantity right. and type of stalls. Right. So that is worked into the equation. We see here um, six, hand, six handicap stalls. So, yeah. oh. it's so is that going to be right here next to the building that we're talking so about? So we currently have stalls, I believe, right here and also down here. Okay. Um, so we locate them in the closest proximity to a feature that someone would be accessing, which is the um, Bain building, the yeah, beach house, and then also uh, the picnic area. So those stalls are the closest location as possible. And are those just handicap stalls that are marked handicap, or are those the ones that are striped for the Y, the vans? Um, so a uh, stall is only considered a place where you can park in. There are areas, walking zones next to them as required by law. So that doesn't count as a stall if it's striped for no parking. It's an access zone. So if we blow up this area, <coughs> this area right here, we have something that looks like this, uh, and so this is the building at ground level, and then this is a series of ramps and little uh, viewing platforms that lead up to the gazebo, and we've designed it in such a way that it allows for wheelchair access from grade up to the gazebo. And the thought here is that rather than just having a long series of ramps, we would have stopping points to break up one's journey and allow points for sitting or viewing or eating along the way with different vantage points, different viewpoints out to the water. And then of course we've got stairs that come up from the south beach here and stairs that come up from near the pavilion along there. One other thing I want to point out is, is that this is the mean high water line. That is technically, by dairy and zoning regulations, the rear yard of the, this property. So we're required to have in this zone a 40 foot rear yard setback. So this dashed line is the setback line. And as you can see, the, well, the existing building and every building that's ever been on this site acting as a bathhouse for this beach has been non-conforming. And the gazebo, is, as you can see, is totally non-conforming. So um, this is the one, other, other than the parking space size variance that Dan described a moment ago, this is the one other variance that we'll be seeking in November. Now, to the building, the whole concept of the building was driven by the committee's desire to have bathrooms at grade. So this element here is the bathroom element at grade, which you see here in the model. And what we've done is FEMA allows us to, to spend no more than 50% of the assessed value of the, of the building, according to the tax assessor, on a renovation. Once you go above 50%, you're required to take the whole thing up to code. So if we spend, right now the assessed value of the building is just under 200000 so we're allowed to spend, I think it's about 96000 to renovate the building, and no more than that. If we spend more than that, we can't renovate it, we'd have to bring the whole thing up and we'd have to raise the bathrooms up to the, to the higher elevation. So because of our desire to save the bathrooms, what we are proposing, we, we, knowing we only have $96,000, is that we actually demolish the, the portion of the building that currently houses the concession, the lifeguard storage, and the police storage and a portion of the bathroom element that is really not being used. It's got showers now. And to make it a much smaller area, as you can see right here, that would have an access from each side. And um, 
spend all the money to renovate that. Once we determine that, and, and by the way, we decided to bring the building forward, you know, demolish it so that the, the, the renovated portion is closest to the parking lot, because the town has a, the, the town zoning regulations have a, what they call a five foot rule, which means that any portion of a building can't, can't be any closer to another building than five feet. So, in this case, with this building here, whatever the new building is, that has to be at least five feet from the bathroom element. So that's the slot of space that you see that wraps the bathroom element. So given that location, the rest of the building had to be, you know, forward of that. And from there, we took your building program and, oh, what you can see here is um, going the wrong way. There we go. Ah, okay. Sorry. So when it comes upstairs here, there's an elevated platform. That platform is going to be about nine feet above grade. Um, Actually, a little bit more than that. So it's determined by the FEMA regulation. Uh, it specifies a base flood elevation, which in this zone is 15. And the Darien Town regulations require that the bottom of any structural, the, the lowest structural member has to be at least 12 inches above that. So the bottom of our structure would be at elevation 16. And we're going to have somewhere a foot to 18 inches of structure. So the, the elevation of this deck is going to be somewhere around, you know, between uh, 16 foot 6 and 17 feet, probably. <coughs> and so we've got a stair that comes in from the beach, the south beach. We've got a stair that comes up from the parking lot. And, and you know, maybe, maybe I want to just clarify, not, that's above... That's above sea level, not above. Oh yes, I'm grade. sorry. Above sea level, right? The grade is right now in the area of the pavilion. It's approximately elevation eight. So um, the deck is going to be about this elevated deck is going to be about nine feet above that. So from upstairs, what you see here is that we have a vestibule. That's an elevator vestibule. We're including an elevator for handicap accessibility. And then here is an ADA accessible bathroom. It's off this little vestibule. From there, one comes into the flexible community room. The concessions over here. So as one comes up the steps or comes around, there's a window here. You place your order, you grab your food, and then one can sit on tables along here, or go back down to, to grade and find a place to eat. The flexible community room has three large fold-up doors, which you can see in the model, that as they fold up, it really opens the, that space to the outside deck. So uh, on a nice day, those doors can be up. People can be walking in and out and uh, gives it a very nice feel. And then the other element here is we, we've got a, a room for storing uh, various things. We need to have that. And then as you go downstairs, below this, we have a series of columns that will um, there'll be a structural grid that supports the second floor spaces. And down here, we're going to have room for first aid, for lifeguards, for the police, for some general storage. And then this is the elevator vestibule entered at grade. And the elevator will be designed so that it returns to the upper level when it's not in use, so that it's out of the flood ways. And um, that's similar to the elevators that have been put in recently at the Tokenique Club and the Rotten Yacht Club. 
I want to mention a point, one more point about these walls. So these walls have to be designed to be breakaway, according to the FEMA regulations. So um, they have very specific uh, details for how one designs <coughs> those panels. And this can't be finished space. We've clarified that it can be used for things like first aid. Uh, lifeguards, when they come off duty, can occupy this space, but as long as it's not finished. In other words, no sheetrock, you know, that sort of thing. And so we will detail that accordingly. Are there any questions about the plans before I go to the elevations? Well, we could come back to that. So for the elevations, what we're proposing is, um, you see here, a very shallow pitch shed roof. And you can see it here in the model, again. The reason we chose a, a shed roof was to keep the height and scale of the building down, because we, we got a lot of comments from the design process from members of the community about concern about height, building height. So you see here the eave that's closest to the parking lot is the low point, and then the roof slopes up and sort of opens out toward the water. And um, <coughs> that's where that came from. We're, we're planning to have the deck that wraps around it have, have a very kind of light and airy railing. Uh, we've, in this design, we've shown a cable railing. We've also uh, considered maybe having a wire mesh railing, uh, bank or wire, they call it, uh, railing. So that, you know, that, that's something that we will confirm with the building committee as we move forward into the uh, construction documents should the project be approved and go to that point. In terms of the, the um, palette of building materials, we're proposing a white cedar shingle, which will weather to a silvery gray similar to houses on Nantucket or Cape Cod. We're proposing um, down below a, a sort of a shiplap siding also out of the white cedar, so it too will weather the same way. We're proposing to have um, the building supported by a series of concrete sonotubes. And um, we're proposing the roof, that the roof be a standing seam metal, probably um, you know, either a lead coated copper or perhaps zinc or, or galvalume. Uh, that'll be determined by the budget. And the reason for going with the metal roof is that it will last 100 years. And so you won't have to maintain it. Uh, the, the, the pitch of this roof is too shallow for uh, a wood roof. And we really didn't want to go with an asphalt shingle roof. Uh, so, you know, in terms of longevity, we think that um, it's money well spent. But there again, we'll have to see what happens when we get real numbers on this. One other thing we're introducing in the palette is uh, brick cladding on both the, the, the restroom unit and the elevator shaft. And um, in this particular design, we're showing it as a glazed blue brick, sort of you know, bringing the nautical and theme and, and the Darien town color into uh, the design. But we are also exploring other options, other types of brick and other types of cladding. It, it should be masonry, though, because this element is going to get the flooding when it floods. And this element really has to be a masonry uh, structure because it houses the elevators, the elevator shaft. And one little fun thing we've done is we, we are proposing a tide clock on the, that facade of the elevator shaft that will uh, face out toward the boat club. 
be visible from the parking lot. This window here is the concession window with the menu there. And, and this particular design, let me go back for a sec. You see, we were, we were thinking of putting the uh, kayaks underneath there, but we have since rethought that because we learned that it might be too far uh, from where people can actually launch the kayaks because of the way the beaches are, are cordoned off. You can't really go from here out to the water. You've got to take it back up toward the boat club. So a nice idea, and the red really looked cool in the drawing. But, uh, <laughs> so will that become like a picnic? It could be, it could be a, seating, like yeah. shade space. Yeah. We think of a place where there's a lifeguard might want to hang out there in the shade there. And this shows you the, you know, these these doors that are up in the up position, and some tables on that elevated platform. Um, okay, so now we want to get into budget. We we spent some time putting together a preliminary budget. And I stress the word preliminary because it's based on a set of pretty plans and elevations and model. But we think it, you know, it, based on Dan's experience and based on my experience, I think it, it takes us to the right ballpark. And without going through every line item, I'll just show you that the site work elements total approximately 900,000. The structures, the, bu the buildings and elevated Walkways and ramps total about a million three. We have then put a 15% healthy project contingency in there just to try and keep it real, and we come up with a budget of about 2.5 million. So that that tells you where we are in terms of the design. It tells you where we are in terms of the process of getting approvals. Tells you what we think it's going to cost, and uh, you know, it takes you through the next steps. Okay, here, um, the past instructions are not attached. That's a great new book. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry. Um, but this is uh, to scale the, book, the before and after so people can see the comparable of the um, existing structures that we proposed. Okay. Great. To scale. This is existing. So we'll just pass that around, but yeah, we'll pass the meeting over. That shows you the, right, the existing mm -hmm. structure and the proposed new structure side by side, so you get a sense for the, the relative scale. Mm -hmm. The new structure really doesn't have a much larger mm -hmm. footprint than the existing. Most of that is due to the, uh, the elevated deck, which you obviously have to get into the, the building. So. Uh, Mostly that. Okay, well, that's passing around. Uh, commission members, do you have questions for Neil, Dan, or Brian? Mm -hmm. How uh, deep is that overhang over the garage doors? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, where it's facing. Mm, good point. I was just trying to figure out because I know that that'll help with any like, shade or yeah. snow. Yeah, I think right now it's. <coughs> Six or seven feet? Six or seven feet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about right here? Several different places. Oh, that one? Yeah, yeah. This one. I think that's about six feet. Yeah, I think it's six feet. Um, I have standing seam roofs on a house, and they're great, but um, the only issue we've ever had is like sometimes, you know, the pitch is different on our roofs, but they do, you do get snow, and it snows, you know, it slides. Yeah. And I know it slides right into this back deck area. Right. Then that gets close to where the space between the bathroom and that. Yeah, you'd have to have snowbirds up there. Yeah. So what are you going to do with snow snowbirds? Snowbirds? Yeah, I have those. I yeah. Know. And it still comes off? Oh, yeah, but this is yeah. Vermont, so it's very different. Oh, yeah. Darian, right. sorry, I should, I should have said that. <coughs> but, um, you know, because I know that in Vermont, if you don't take care of it, they, that snow comes right off, and, and, and it'll take out the whole deck railing, really, because of the speeding velocity comes down. But I, don't, I think your pitch is different. And yeah, this is pretty shallow. It looks pretty shallow. I think it's going to it's going to hold the snow or ice, uh, and with the snowboards it'll hold it up there, and then. So one of the there's always been comments that um, you know obstructing the view, but if I look at these scales, it doesn't seem much obstruction. 
but I guess is the current structure placed in such a way that's very different than where the new structure would be? No, I mean this element right here. That is yeah. the current building. That's the current yeah. building. I just I wonder what the, the public comment about obstruction of and by view um, from a car what that meant. Oh right. no, the the I think none the, of that's changed. The public comment about obstructed view had to do with the dunes. Oh, which are gone now. Which are gone. Okay. But there's still comments out there about obstructed view. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, this, I, this building is not going to change anyone's views from anywhere. It's, it's virtually, I mean, the existing building has a roof that goes like that. Our building starts with the bathroom element in the foreground, and it's low, and then beyond that, you've got the, the low eave of the, of the building, so I... I just think there's generalizations of the construction of the It doesn't seem like that this is. Yeah. So, it's good to So if, like, it was, like, a cold day or something, or even if using this in the off-season, the three garage doors would be kept closed, and then there'd be these entrances, two doors, it looks like, a double door and then one door right. to get in. So, um, if you go to the plan here, when we come in this door, mm -hmm. or, or if you're coming in from a wheelchair, you can enter the vestibule down here, right. come up the elevator, arrive there, and then come in here. These doors would be down, right? but they're still all glass, so you get a wonderful view out to Which the water. Is, yeah. Awesome. from that corner. But this door right next to this one door, yeah, that's operating, right? You can still get into the building there. Right. And then these two right here, and then next to right. the vestibule. Exactly. Yeah. Did you consider any environmental efficiencies like solar? Or we haven't yet. I mean, it certainly is something we can, we can add. I don't know that this is the best orientation for solar because the roof is actually facing uh, west. Yeah, it's not. So, um, I'm sorry, it's facing east. Yeah, east. Backwards. <laughs> and it's very shallow, so you need more of a pitch and it would be better if it was facing south. For heating, I mean, I know you haven't really worked on heating and stuff, but it's not a, how much space is being heated if you needed to heat upstairs, basically. It's about, um, well, this room, this um, community room is about 550 square feet, and assuming that we're also going to be heating the concession and the, uh, let me see, what, add all those up. Probably talking about 800 square feet or something yeah. like that. Not a lot. Of so, space. like something a mini split would take care of it easily. I think so. Right. Yeah. And that's pretty efficient because it heats immediately, and right. you know you could you don't have to have it on constantly. Yeah, we're talking about eight, 800 or so square feet. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, I forgot to mention, is that we're, right now we're proposing a green roof on top of the bathroom element. That's yeah, I saw that. Here. And that is sort of an environmental thing. Uh, we also are proposing some skylights so you get some natural light down into there. Oh, that's from cool. above. Which like is something those. we did at the, uh, the stadium uh, pavilion at the high school stadium. Oh, yeah. We bring nice natural light into those bathrooms. Nice idea. Any more questions? Here? We're going to have outdoor showers, yeah, okay. uh, right out here. So what we're proposing right here is um, ah, too far again. a bench right along the bathroom element and then outdoor showers out in front so that um, you can come off the beach, wash the sand off, and sit and wait for someone to pick you up. <laughs>
Is the audience allowed to ask questions? No. No. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone. Uh, so, on to the next project, we Beach Meadow and Trail. Um, for those knowing, I just gave this presentation two hours ago upstairs. <laughs> the RTM Parks and Rec. Community. Right, so you're going to be really good at it. Yeah, so that was a dry run. Yeah. But I forgot everything. So, <clears throat> just want to go through kind of where we are in the process. So, the <clears> audience, <throat> please. Uh, just so everyone's familiar, I th believe I presented maybe last year uh, about the short lane parcel last fall. Uh, last fall. So, uh, what has evolved since that process? And if I repeat anything, remind me. You've already heard this. But uh, went through the short lane process. We got mo through most of the approvals uh, just before going to planning zoning, which was proposed for late spring. Um, at that time, the town was approached by the Darien Athletic Foundation and Darien Foundation uh, with interest in investing in the improvements at Weed Beach. So at that point, uh, we have been working with those two foundations and the Parks Rec Department uh, to develop what you're hearing is the Weed Beach Meadow and Trail, which was recommendations as part of the Parks Rec Master Plan for a couple years ago. So since then, uh, in July, we kicked off a project to what you're going to see tonight. Um, been having multiple project review meetings. Um, the four fucking heard of how to, how to get a uh, discussion on the 7th. Uh, and then tonight we're here giving a status update and I'll run through our next steps of the project arm. Uh, so really uh, the project is taking the short lane parcel and adding a series of trails around the greater uh, park area of Weed Beach. And actually Neil was involved in the last iteration of Weed Beach uh, with uh, a colleague of mine uh, that helped develop some of these concepts a number of years ago at this point. So what you see here on the plan is um, the gray lines, just for simplicity purposes, is a multi-use path that is proposed to circle the perimeter of Wheat Beach and also the short lane, which this is a commonly known as short lane. Now known as the Meadows. Now known as the Meadows, yes. Forever to be known as the Meadows. Um, the greater uh, network within the perimeter of Wee Beach is about uh, just under a mile. Uh, there are uh, a quarter mile, that's going to be a fitness circuit, the uh, idea of having a cluster of series of uh, fitness equipment that's currently in the park clustered together for use. Um, but along the beach front, which is here is the current beach, and it kind of ends right about here before it necks down where these lines are, is to widen the beach and then provide a boardwalk along the edge of the beach, about 625 linear feet. So I'm going to run through a couple of the items that are in, included within this uh, project area. So uh, what you see in the map, uh, the dashed red lines are just delineating the areas that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, they are not proposed improvements to the plan. Uh, but I'm going to start here talking about the typical trail, uh, what the trail consists of and the aesthetics of it. Uh, running down along uh, the existing parking lot is here by the paddle huts in front of the pavilion building, uh, along the boardwalk section to the meadow area, which you see here, which is a basically a grass open area, a lawn area for to host events and just simply enjoying the, the lawn overlooking the water. Um, on the back side of the meadow, this is an existing wetland area that's proposed to be restored and actually have a loop trail going around and a boardwalk spanning portion of that wetland. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the trail, its connection, and a raised crosswalk, and then a little bit about the fitness cluster uh, that we're proposing. So those are the main areas I'm going to talk about. And I forgot to mention the boat storage area down by the Junior Sailing current boat storage. Uh, so in general terms, uh, the trail is currently proposed as asphalt surface. I see here. Uh, hard, stable surface for the majority of the pathway. Uh, that allows people to run, walk, uh, strollers, you know, small wheel that I mentioned inline skating earlier, but that's actually a fad that's wearing away. It's not as common. Um, scooters is what many would say. My daughter's doing <laughs> Yeah, my, my daughter's doing inline skates are then in my basement. They go to the scooters and zip around. Razor scooters for coming in. Um, so a hard and stable surface for as many users as possible. Um, where we do cross the entry drive of the park area, uh, so imagine this is the driveway for uh, motor vehicles, 
Um, a raised crosswalk basically gives a flush surface for pathway users to cross that driveway. So motorists would actually go up a little bit and flat and come down as a driver. So it's uh, safer for uh, uh, alerting users, motorists, that there's a trail crossing and to slow and to um, be aware of what is happening within park area. So it effectively serves as a speed bump? It does. As a traffic calming, I would, yeah. I would call it there, yeah. So it calms the traffic to a mm -hmm. slow motorist passing through the park space, which have been known to right. seeing some people zipping through there pretty quick to get to paddle sometimes. Uh, and other events the gate, So, I mean, it's really important. We, that was one of the things that we were very nervous about because it does cross twice there. Right. And it was critical that this, this walkway would slow motors down because the right of way is to the pedestrian and usually the path. And we didn't think there was going to be any way that we were going to slow people down without paying anything. Yeah, no, I think it's so, it was, it was going to cost you know, money, but mm -hmm. I think the safety, safety. of the path yeah. is yeah. 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 It's absolute. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the boardwalk, which spans basically the length of the current beach plus more, which is in the uh, backs of the meadow. Um, proposed the boardwalk is a flush surface, so if you imagine the beach area, it's flush grade between the boardwalk and the beach. Um, I pay wood boardwalk surfacing, as you see here. Um, we proposed to the foundation and the commission also, Jim Flynn was in the conversation too about maintenance. We proposed different materials, everything from uh, discuss pressure tree wood, which is what commonly used on many decks, high splinters, uh, it can warp in time, it dries out really fast, all the way down to a concrete product, Permatrac, one brand, uh, very stable, strong, uh, can handle this harsh conditions very well, and kind of in between the middle was a sustainable wood product that you see here. So um, you're seeing this as its uh, prime existence, uh, freshly installed or possibly even stained and um, maintained. Uh, but it tends to go to more of a silvery, uh, a dullish look as you see here. And an example of this up in Guildford, which they just put a, a boardwalk like this within last year or so uh, as well. So the idea is to have this surface. It's a walking environment uh, to walk along the beach uh, and be level. There is exception to that where we're proposing two overlook areas. And I'll go back quickly to the overall uh, uh, Alignment. Excuse me, regarding the surface, do you think I pay is the way to go here? I mean, you mentioned a bunch of different things. Yeah, we so I pay. It's you no know, splinters, no cutting. Yeah, it's, it's a very good, it's dense expensive. hardwood. It's expensive. Yeah, um, we're more. We're more, yeah. Oh, more. Yeah. Really? We, we that was, no, uh, that was 25 years. Cement. That yeah. was, we Con get a concrete cement one yeah. that was more money. Uh -huh. and, um, yeah. Okay, so, so I pay is the way to go. To make it look more natural. Nice. Yeah. The environment. Good. Um, so this is the segment of the boardwalk extends basically along the edge of the beach. Um, two areas that we want to create places of interest so people can walk from the pavilion, walk down along the boardwalk, have a place to sit, rest, overlook the beach area. So I'm going to highlight these two areas. And to, also two other um, areas of interest that we're working with. Um, if you squint and you can see that the boardwalk is consistent with and here is kind of a little bit of bulge. So we're looking at possibly making these some visual interest to these areas, widening these um, to give a little bit of a um, other area. So if someone was to sit aside or decide to put a bench there at grade, it gives a little more width to that boardwalk. So it's not consistent uh, straight line all the way down uh, the whole length of the of the beach. So we're working that through that process right now. So back to the overlooks. Um, it, back here, just for reference, this is the current pavilion building. The paddle hut is back here, the paddles, uh, and this is the existing parking area. And here are the existing dunes. The idea is to have the boardwalk between the beach and the dunes. And actually, they would be set into the dunes. So you have these uh, little raised seating area and slightly raised above the beach at this point as well. So you have a little seating area along the edge of the beach and a seating area that's set into the beach, uh, into the dunes as well. So this one has a uh, little uh, stair going up to this uh, overlook area, and this is a little more flush, but still raised in the beach. So kind of adding a little variety, but also having close proximity to where users are going to be getting refreshments and want to sit, or simply if like my kids, where they want to run everywhere, and I'd be sitting there waiting for them to come back. Uh, <laughs> so the idea is to have this place that's a little different interest area. Um, also note that the current grade of the parking lot, um, here these are handicapped stalls. Um, the idea is to have this as a flush grade all the way at the beach. 
So you'd walk out flush from the parking area and slightly ramp up on either direction to these sitting areas. So they're slightly perched, um, just creating a visual interest, a place for people to enjoy. I think it's fantastic. Are we okay that somebody would have to probably brush the flush often? Um, it's the, the, the sand goes right through. So I would never... And there's like little spacers. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. no, I, I think so. I never fantastic. noticed in Guilford, too. I mean, it's no, I always just didn't. Okay. And, and uh, they, um, Jim Flynn, who is our parks ma uh, maintainer or supervisor, I should say, he um, was on the meeting and he, you know, one of the things he talked about was how he can maintain it. And mm -hmm. how you, there's snow on it and he's going to be able to use the equipment he has on the surface. Perfect. And he, we also went over with him, you know, how to get different things to the beach because now we're, we're putting this huge boardwalk there. So mm -hmm. Dan's also worked on, you know, finding ways for that 40 so foot stage to go right. through right. to the, I mean, so these are things that are being considered. Perfect. That, really important that, you know, later yeah. on you're like, ooh, how do we get that 40 foot yeah. stage for yeah. we beach fest out there? Yeah. And it was great that Jim Flynn was part of the nice. conversation. Love it. So the next, um, the previously called Short Lane, now called the Meadows. Uh, basically, this is existing parking area that's currently stone sand-ish. So formalizing that parking area uh, with additional parking stalls, uh, paved with accessible parking area as well. Um, so that would be entering into what was previously the lawn areas, but creating now a lawn with a little bit of a uh, small a paver plaza area uh, that can be a place that could have a small jazz band, could have a little a craft fair or some sort of outdoor festival with some pop up tents. Um, so down this, this is a lower area in comparison to the upper uh, lawn area, so you can sit in the lawn and overlook this plaza space. On the back side um, is a walking network that goes through the wetland area. Um, in the past, short lane approvals, we went to the sewer commission. And they gave ex, uh, authorization to use this is actually their uh, purview area uh, to restore these wetlands and to create a boardwalk network pathway going through this wetland area as well. Uh, I mentioned the dunes that exist along Lee Beach area as well as here. This is proposing that those continue along through the back side to create a buffer between the meadow and the beach area. We're working out those details right now, but really keeping that consistent aesthetic of the band. Um, all the way down through here as well to where the um, junior sailing boat storage area is. When you say the dunes there, those are green, so would those be grasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, for our rimming purposes, it's grass, but yes, uh, it would be like the current dunes like you see now. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's like you could still see through a little bit. Yes, it's yeah. It's not solid. No, it's not solid. No. Um, these are walking paths that will connect. We're still working out those configurations. At the conversation with Jim Flynn, where um, one of these would have to provide easy access for the large uh, stage to be drawn out onto the beach. So we're working through these alignments to make sure that's accessible for him and his users. Um, specifically looking at the junior sailing, the image on the upper left, this is a current boat storage area for junior sailing, uh, which is the old uh, parking driveway area that's being used by them. And the proposal is to have a gravel paved surface uh, that can be used for the same storage area, same space that they can store their boats with access down to water. It's more uh, sustainable product, allows water infiltrating through this uh, surface, and it's hard and compact for the dinghies to be rolled out on the dollies down to the water. Um, as part of the project, we're looking to consolidate this existing fitness equipment back in the back area by all the bugs and mosquitoes. We're gonna pull them out, we can have a little uh, proposed fitness circuit cluster uh, that'll be right by the front tennis courts. So kind of a common area where users uh, can have easy access in parking lot, they can't walk so far, but also just visible and make it more apparent um, to cluster them together for um, easier access and use. Um, so our process, we're still, we only started this back in July, we're kind of going pretty quickly, but the, the hope is um, we're going to work through utility coordination, design documents. Um, after tonight, the RTM has a meeting on Monday for approval of the donation from Daring Athletics Foundation and Daring Foundation. So if that was decided that they're going to move forward with that approval, then it happens on Monday. And our hope is to uh, get on to the EPC uh, meeting for November and decision in December and planning zoning for uh, public hearing in January. 
with a ribbon cutting June of 2020 for the quintessential whatever. Yeah, whatever. It is. Yeah. Uh, the big celebration, the big party at Wee Beach. So the goal is that it would be constructed by June. Um, so it's aggressive. It's aggressive. Uh, but um, we're we're in line with pushing this through. So that's a rasp. Questions for Dan? I mean, it's amazing because Neil, you did the building, and the original plans included right. this whole involved walkway, right. and we took it out because. I think we couldn't have, I mean, I like it just it felt, I mean, it was fortuitous that we got that property because we didn't own that when yeah. we did meet each one, and to have that now and be able to do a complete, almost mile loop is yeah. phenomenal, and I don't think we would have come up with that kind of money to get it done anyway. I mean, this is a, this is a very generous it's a donation. Wonderful. It's up to a $1.5 million donation, which is extremely yeah. phenomenal. I mean, for, for the town yeah. to get that is a gift from two foundations, supported yeah. by local residents. It's very gratifying, you know? Very fortunate. Did we get the loop to a mile? No. Oh, you we didn't go for it. <laughs> well, well, I took the yeah. outer one way, but you could do a zigzag and probably stretch it out, so. Well, you covered all of them, though. All oh, the it'd be over a mile, okay. I just think over it, but okay. yeah, I assume that a runner like me would not want to do like a zigzag dash. I just do two loops. Call it day. Most people are talking. <laughs> this is enough to get a great workout and to do it a couple of times. Okay. I mean, you're, you're, this is going to be gold. And I love to, like, people, people, little kids off road, too. Yeah. Bicycles and, like, scooters. And and also, out of the busyness. It, it yeah. becomes very accessible for people, not only seniors, but people with other accessibility issues that, you know, often don't have. This, you know, even on a playground, we have to do that and porn play. And I don't feel like it was the most accessible. Walking jobs were definitely a, a desired item. Right. It, as noted, the results of that. Connect that to another beach, you know? And what I think, too, is that this is the difference. That's why I think this commission and the building committee are thinking of both, both beaches as different. They are different. Yeah. You know, this is our very active beach, and Pear Tree is our it's a fun beach. Yeah. You know, we're not looking to bring playgrounds and all different elements to yeah. Pear Tree. So like, but we love to take the elements to the beach. And, let it have that activity. They serve different people. It is totally different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, you guys, should we let them go first? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Don't worry about me. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. 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 It's like a draft. Yeah, could you just shut that screen for that? Okay, projector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the front screen. Is that it? Yeah, just touch that. Yeah. 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 It's actually quite light, isn't it? Right? So we're just focusing on the agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the next thing we were going to put in the agenda was whether we want to continue as we did last year to um, allow off-leash dogs at Beat Beach. Now, the one question, we, we, we could table this and we don't have to go tonight. One question I had was, given the area that's being utilized for that program, that is right where the construction would be going on and what kind of challenges um, that would create and whether that's problematic or not. Because that could be a, a non-starter for I, I think we should hold off for next year only because of that. I mean, the pilot program in South Carolina pretty, like, was pretty good. Right. Um, but I'm concerned that with our aggressive schedule and how, I mean, how much equipment's going to be down there. Yeah, I, just I, I just wouldn't want to vouch for the safety of, you know, mm -hmm. people that would be. I, I will say safe. that we are trying to be aggressive with the goal, but we're looking at PNZ possibly in January. I don't think anything's going to happen in February. So I think it's safe to say we could go November to February and be. Or do you mean change the dates? Or what were our dates? I, you know, what did you propose? Last year we got them on December 1st through the end of March. But I would say, you know, I don't think I'd have to stop the end of February. 
I don't want to shut it off. Yeah. So even if even if even if we thought we were super aggressive and we had construction in there, they could start on the other side of the property too. But I, I honestly don't see it starting in February. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you would keep it to the current last year stage, or would you change it to adjust it to February? I would adjust it to February. instead of completely saying no to it. Right. So it would just, be the, just the schedule. I mean, people seem to really enjoy it, um, and I think we need to keep keep a special eye on it this year. I mean, I I felt that every time that I went down there and I viewed it, it looked clean. People were um, respectful of the property. Not until the end of the season did I get a few comments from Jim Clinton, who did not share that with me during it. So I, I honestly had, did not witness any of that. So okay. what were Jim's comments? Jim said that he saw some, you know, some people not picking up this and that. But I never witnessed. I that. heard there were some computations too, like a bunch of computations. Yeah, yeah. Um, they came through, and I, it was it was interesting. Like some, uh, there was some issues with some bigger and smaller dogs mm -hmm. and people being afraid and. Mm -hmm. it, it's a really small space, I mean, to be honest with you. It's not the biggest space, so um, something just to consider. Right. I mean, and also if we do allow it, is it, are we going to consider it for the year after, even when the space is continuing? You know, you know, I just, you know, now that yeah, it's, it the space is going to be a little different with the dunes there mm -hmm. and with the other Boardwalk. uses, so, you know, something that, I just feel like if we keep on doing it, like, do we really have a defined plan that we are going to Well, interestingly it? enough, you might, the commission might want to consider, you know, not having an off-leash area. But if you have all those path pathways and pathways, it might be nice to have an on-leash. I you think know, that's a little that that challenging only because, like, you know, with dogs, with, you know, bicycles and things mm -hmm. like that, they chase, you know, people, and then they see things running around. It's just harder. Mm -hmm. And we have an on-leash rule at Woodland and Continuously, and it never got better. Right. And you know, even with the, the rules that we established as a commission many years ago, we were very strong about it remaining a nature preserve and it's not being right. taken care of that way. So I'm a little. That would be my only concern. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would expect people to use the paths year round. I mean, we know that the playground is used yeah. year round. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. People are down there even in the winter on the playground. And the boardwalk so, is going to be beautiful. And the boardwalk. Yeah. You yes. expect people are going to be walking it. So it's just That's hard true. to say to people, oh no, we're gonna let you do another year and then not. You know what I mean? I just, I don't, I, I just, we, I just, we, I think we just need to think it through about the future use of that space. Um, I, just say, I will recognize okay. members of the Thank Parks and Recreation Thank you. Thank you. Parks and Rec. I was just saying that as part of my due diligence, I went down to um, the Darien Police Department, like I do every year mm -hmm. before we have these discussions, <coughs> um, and. Um, uh, Officer Mike, who is at the records desk, uh, I asked him for an update on any dog incidences or tickets at Cherry Lawn for all of 2019 through present. There were zero. Um, and I asked for any dog um, tickets or incidences at um, the beta test where you guys had it mm -hmm. at Weed Beach, and he said there were zero. He said they had to talk to a few residents to explain the rules mm -hmm. and where to be. Mm -hmm. He said that otherwise there were no issues. So I think that that's legitimate information. Mm -hmm. and I think that's important to put into the record. Right. Thank you. But we did get comments about Cherry Lawn, and we continuously do, about things that happen there, about dogs that don't get filed with police. Right, Just right. to be honest, we get letters a lot. Oh, oh pick them. We share them. I mean, Susan, I went, when I went down on Monday and put up signs saying, please remember to pick up, you know, and I drew a cute little doggy thing on it and said, please pick it up. These are the rules um, as part of, right. it's well policed by the people who are down there. I'm just saying in terms of legitimate tickets or things like that, it's been zero in Cherry right. it's been zero. And um, I had asked Erica if people should come, and I wasn't really part of the, the Wee Beach beta test kind of thing, but I asked her if um, she, we should encourage people to come and speak tonight. And she felt strongly that most of you thought that that was a good program mm -hmm. and that people didn't need to come. So if that's incorrect, then maybe that was incorrect information given to us. But um, I think it was, I mean, I have photos. People really enjoyed it. So mm -hmm. thank yeah. you. The dog people were so, you know, they worked so hard to, you know, mobilize and to come talk to us. And it, it, from all accounts, I think that the program was a huge success. Mm -hmm. I think it would be wrong of us to shut it down.
My opinion is that I thought what we were doing as a commission was we voted to give it a try, a trial for a year, and if we felt like at the end of the trial there was no reason not to proceed, that we would continue with it. Um, so um, we also didn't have Reed Beach really on right. the line yet. To be honest with you, right. I mean, we never had. Well, we didn't have the opportunity. We didn't have the opportunity. We have the plan now. Nothing was, and now the could be it's, it's, I mean, we're getting it funded separately. It's happening, and we're, we don't. We're not at the mercy of cup town funding. Hmm. So it's definitely happening. And we know this is happening. So that's my only concern is that once you open that door and allow that, you know, it's hard. You know, I get it. We already did, obviously, and we have expectations in place now. So it's just something to consider, hmm. you know, just going forward. And but that's I, my only right, concern. But I do think we're going to have to think about it once the metal project is complete and how that's utilized because the idea was that was a really separate area that frankly nobody else was using. but. I think it's going to be actively used, um, including the children and such. I think we are, frankly, going to have to rethink it once that project is, is done. Um, I'll recognize. Just, just to, to the point of uh, Mr. Flynn's com comment, I did have one of my members say that uh, when she she took her dog there, and when she you looked, it looked fine. You didn't see that people weren't picking up. She said, but her dog could find his nose could find every place where people kick the sand up over what was there. And so that's, that's kind of because that's part of the reason we didn't allow dogs on the beaches to be in because of this the health right. reasons. Right. Because children would be digging up stuff and if there were any remnants of any type of that kind of waste we were getting by it. Yes. I know, and we also <laughs> deliberately had it set us away from where the kids would be. We put right. it far, far away from the playground. And it's all clearly you know where the signage is very clear that dogs are in that area. I, ju I just wish as a commission we'd taken the time, because you know we had a trial period, and the trial period ended in the spring, and I just wish, this is all new to me, because I thought we kind of had a recap at the end of the trial period, and I didn't think any of this came up, so. Um, no, because I had good reports from, from my yeah. own. So I think yeah. somehow we missed a lot of important information, it seems. Uh, anyway. What's the start date, or what was the start date last year? December first. Um, is there a way to push it for Thanksgiving weekend so that people home with their kids can go take the dogs down and walk? Do you guys? Um, Especially in light of the we're going to yeah. shut it down at the end of February, maybe right. to you know to give a little lead time in November would be nice. Yeah, making it a longer period. In the beginning. I mean, Thanksgiving is super late, so. I think if you're going to do it, this is the only. This may be the only opportunity because with the project coming along it look it sounds to me as if we're leaning toward probably not having a program like this if mm -hmm. that all that money gets poured into that yeah but then if we're letting them do it then we set up an expectation how do we shut it off next year we're just putting it off another year and I that's my only concern I don't want to make people be like oh you know we're gonna give it to you one more year but we're really not gonna do it for you again you know what I mean like I just don't I everybody's saying shut it off now so then we just I mean just, we're hearing some negative things and you know, that's my only concern, the negatives. So, but you know what? I will go whatever the commission says with the understanding that I know going down the line is going to be a really tough decision because we are putting the money in, money. considerable yeah. amounts of money and resources, and we will increase our visitors to that space dramatically. And it's hard to tell. I mean, I know that when we did the playground, I was like, well, there are not everybody's going to be there in the winter, or but then we'd have warm days and you see kids down there. I'm just, you know, so we can't predict wet weather anymore either. So, you know, even if we gave it, like, it's a winter off-season, is it really off-season if the weather's nice? People are going to go down there, you know what I mean? It's weather-dependent, really. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can't base your policy on weather. But we proved it last year knowing that. And we didn't have any problems with that same time period. But we are hearing that there's leftovers in the same. Yeah, but we didn't hear about well, And then we're, we're also hearing there's not quite a the people are down yeah. there. I just, it's not balanced. So. When do we need to decide? Uh, we're in October, so do we, when, do, when do we need, I mean, is this the absolute last time? Should we try to get more? No, I mean, back? we could vote. Um, our next meeting is on the 20th, which is still eight days before Thanksgiving. And you could still have it in place for Thanksgiving. Right? So. Is that workable for you? <coughs> Yeah, but if you can we have a database that we can shoot it out to. All the powers that we, I know, I mean, Patty provided some great information. I think we have some public stuff. comment, too. Yeah. If we're, yeah, we should. we're going to cut it down, you know, shut it down, I think the public needs to be able to 
participate in that conversation. If you do public comment, you have to do the public comment the next meeting, and then the next meeting you vote. So then you're looking at you're, yes. you're extending. I just, I mean, isn't that true? I mean, but you can't vote during public comment. Can you? Do you have to wait? I thought there was a waiting period between public comment and when we can actually make a policy. At, at least that's what we've always done: is that we did public comment, and then the next. And that meeting has been our practice. That's been. The, I, I'm not sure if that's what we're supposed to do, but it's always been our practice. So that it was public comment, and I think people could input. Via other means, and that's when that's why we left it. That's why we didn't move it for that time. Uh, Lucy, I'm sorry. It was last year the only year we've ever allowed. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every other town, neighboring town, there's a variety. Dog Town Walk does not allow any dogs on the beach. Um, there's a dog park. That's why. Westport does. Yeah, Compo does. All right. Well, I think we're down to. Do we want to do this for one more year? knowing that we will have to revisit it once we beach in that area and parcel is revisited and we're comfortable or not. That's where we are. Well, I'd like to see it happen again and just start earlier. Until February. Okay. I think you need to shut it down by the end of February with the construction. I would say just to be safe, mid-February. Mm -hmm. mid -February. I know it's you know, but it's but, but I understand that yeah. public has the opportunity to enjoy it and then with the understanding if we make sure that we do look for it this year that it's not I mean the likelihood of it happening in the future would be pretty mm -hmm. minimal. I just I and I understand you're right, people should have an impact in public comment if we're gonna change like something that we've allowed, mm -hmm. even if it's not a new way. So I'm okay with it going for this year. Yeah. And especially if we can't do it in a timely manner that would allow for you to do it. Let's just do it this let's do it again because it doesn't seem like there's enough comment to negate it. Mm -hmm. But with the beach changing, I think we need to revisit it to understand is it safe? Because I would think that more people are gonna have access that beach year round with the improvements happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that way, you know, they get another year of, you know, to make the adjustment. Right? Right. And that's fine. And if you want to start it Thanksgiving, I'm fine with that mm -hmm. too. And with the idea that it ends in that door. Yeah, take a vote. Yep. Okay. So, here's that the motion on the table is that we allow off leash dogs at Weed Beach in the designated area only. Elsewhere, they're not allowed at all, right? On or off leash, correct? Right. So, off leash only in the designated area beginning Thanksgiving weekend and ending mid February. We want to say on the 28th that it would begin on Thanksgiving? Yeah, what is the date? The 28th. It is the 28th? Yep, yep. That's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. It's so close to. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to move that. So what is it? Mid let, let's put a date in February. Did you put a date in February? 15th. 15th? Okay, sorry. I'm going to end of the school break. Well, that's not, that's a good point. The school break it's starts on the 14th. Break. So I was just thinking, like, if kids are home, families are home for break, you know, take the dog down to the walk, idea. like, just follow through. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm just worried about the school break. Starting. It's, yeah. really, it's, or it's really, it's, or just going to be maybe just down. flexible on construction. Well, let's yeah, say 15th, and then if they let people, no. if it's not going, then we could even extend it further than that, right? If we find out that people, for some reason we're not staying home <laughs> March 15th, we could let we it go later. Why don't we do that? I'm happy. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. So it's basically so 215, but with the idea that if we don't start construction, and we we're willing to find a job. Yeah, and they're fine. Right. It's better to promise okay. less and give more later, mm -hmm. right? If we can. Okay. okay. Sure. All right. So do I have someone who move that? Do you have sure. Yes. Okay. So the, some of the capital improvements <coughs> the projects that we'll be entertaining will be the basketball court at Cherry Lawn, mm -hmm. okay. putting that back on the table. Um, How much was that for, please? Uh, 80000 And the lawn <coughs> playground surface, um, which is most likely going to be around 50000 <coughs> Um, the last fleet of our dump trucks needs to be replaced. 
So McGuan was the playground, right? That's yes. That's what she's talking about, that one and play thing? Mm -hmm. I, we might be able to, I mean, we're probably going to get another year out of it, but we should entertain it. Is it becoming a safety issue? Or? There's some pieces that are bumbling. It's been coming up for so long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just feel bad that I feel like we keep on band-aiding it and yeah. pushing it down, and it's just going to... Well, there's a lot to address whether we go back to that surface, which didn't seem to work God, that's properly. That's a tough area. And or if we, but so the problem is that was a handicap accessible. That we have to keep it in it. And that's that, the those case. swings are handicap accessible. You know that. There's only, the, the only one there. That's only one. Very very old. Yeah, yeah, the one on the end. That needs yeah. to be replaced. We used to. I used to. Be, I thought there were at least two. Well, one. Because I put in the two um, um, swings. Swing with me. The, yeah. This one would be one right there at Green Beach. Yes. I put two of those there. There's only one handicap swing, which, like I said, it's rusting. It needs to be replaced. So we could replace that regardless whether we do the surface right, but in, in July. We have the money for that. Um, but, you know, the surface itself is a big Is that the only handicap accessible really playground though in the area that has a swing that way? I really feel like it is. And so there were two handicap accessible swings there, now it's only one. Wasn't it always two? I've only witnessed one since I've been here. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a hand there on the capital improvements? <coughs> I will come back to you guys with a, okay. actually a list of years, okay. you know, five-year plan. So what are we talking about tonight? Just can I head up? It's just right. These are so just. So McGuan is what now? McGuan is a playground surface. Okay. Which today is a place. rubber. It is a rubber tiles. Mm -hmm. The it. tiles. It was really a very disastrous. Well, we thought it was good. It was just at whole, first. Yeah, it just didn't hold. It was supposed to be able to be like you could take like a carpet tile, you could take parts of it off when you when they came in to oh, repair, yeah. and because anything that was poor in play became you had issues with that too. So okay. that was the, the, the well, the first tile. surface was torn back up, and another one was put down. This big manufacturer warranty issue. Yeah, it was. Oh, I see. And your so, estimate is fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. It's anywhere from forty to fifty thousand. They're very expensive. Parents, <coughs> what is the possibility? of adding some kind of dedicated pickleball court? Um, there's always possibility. But we'd have to consider that. Okay, so that's that's capital too. I thought that was less strike than that's the case that you know you may want Well you mean only pickleball only no, just just one. exactly yeah. one dedicated court from the would that be remodeling the well first off I, the I have a question one. I just want to follow up on Mike's point. This is just discussion. We're not voting. No, on no, 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 right no, no, no. You're no, just no. saying what's of interest to you. Right. We're just and having a discussion of potential capital improvement. Projects. Okay, and then mm -hmm. you're going to give us a list. Right. Okay. And I'll give a list then for us to prioritize. prioritize. Okay. okay. Right. So not to take away from your point. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. So can we use our regular courts and put lines? We have them down. We have that. Or does that not? Lines. That's not what you mean. No, it's no, not. She wants a real pickleball. You want a pickleball permanent that's not shared. It's not shared with us. I have a lot of people. It's fun. Talk to me about yeah, that. Like oh, really? Yeah, oh, it's the hottest thing. I love it. It is. Yeah, yeah. it is. I'm going to try it. People love it. Teach me. <laughs> but um, can you, do you do one at a time, or do you do two, or how does that work? Well, you would have to, the commission would have to make a decision uh, on which court would that be at Cherry Lawn. We do have a single court that we share right, right, right now. Near the we center. share it with pickleball. It's lined for pickleball, it's lined for tennis. So you could potentially repaint that and make it only the only the okay. Or would we add courts? That's the question again. I don't know if I do it at Cherry Lawn. I'm not saying, I'm just squish some more stuff in it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's, there's, there's some grass there. We can <laughs> just put it right there. Well, that's where the basketball court's going. Well, I didn't necessarily need well, to Well, not necessarily so. going. We're talking about Okay, what else is there? Okay, so um, that. And then. I had, um, we have to obtain painting the tennis courts at Reed Beach, that's, uh, you know, it's been seven, eight years now, oh um, establishing another exit at Cherry Lawn. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean that parking thing, like driving? Like driving. Right, mm -hmm. so that would be considering. What do you, what is that price tag, actually? I don't know that, that yet. I just think that's something that we, we need to discuss about Cherry Lawn, because I think we in the long run, it will help everybody. Major Center, our folks. Yeah. We, were, we were also talking about two possibles. One over by the Major Center, mm -hmm. and then one also behind yeah, yeah. where the baseball field Exactly. Right. That would exit out on the person. Okay. 
because they're both in the two iterations of the master plan. Mm -hmm. So that. that's all I have right now. I click. Kind of Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, I'll let you know now. Um, this panel reminds me we have to be out of this room at ten thirty. Um, oh, really? And I've got some things I've got to jump on the uh, chairman's report, and this really feeds into we have a special meeting called for October twenty sixth, um, which is our Saturday parks tour. Right. Okay. Uh, scheduled from eight thirty until noon. Uh, where are we meeting? Well, this is what I wanted to go over with everybody, and I think this ties into the improvement um, projects. Uh, we, we clearly cannot hit all of the town parks. There's just the amount of time allocated. Um, my best estimate is to have any kind of kind of meaningful tour and discussion with Jim Flynn in any given park about the maintenance needs and Pam's thoughts on the capital improvement that we need to allow about a half an hour per park. Um, so a suggested itinerary would be to start at Cherry Lawn at 8.30 um, to 9, um, allowing 15 minutes of travel in between each one. Why do you think that's too short? Yeah, I think it's really... Okay, well let me just read this out and this is what we have to sign. Um, and then, again, this is what I want to go over this with everybody. Um, the 9.15 to 9.45 at Tilly. Uh, 10 to 10.30 at McGuan, 10.45 to 11.15 at Woodland, um, and then move on 11.30 to 12 at Wood Beach, and then that would be as much as we could probably hit in one day to really talk about maintenance and updates and give us a chance to walk what's happening at Wood Beach, um, and some of these other where we need to do capital. But Jeff might be able to spend time at Cherry Lawn. And I was going to say, I think that's enough. Maybe we do that longer, but... I think that's as much as we can reasonably cover. Or we do in one morning. We do one morning, and then we have a second morning to do. We could do that, but that probably wouldn't be until the spring. Finding the dates. Best I would get. Finding the dates been extraordinarily challenging to begin with, and then I don't know that we're going to want to do it in the middle of winter. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we've never done it. So We've never done a start. Before. This is a start. really, and it's really, we have Jim Flynn with us, and Jim wanted to talk about the maintenance and such, and one thing I proposed if we really wanted to have a discussion as we got into the, um, you know, hearing about the maintenance and equipment needs is for Pam to investigate. I believe there is a meeting room at the, um, the, garage. the garage building, and perhaps we schedule one of our meetings to have it there, and part of the meeting is Jim can show us his toys. and In that night? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I think it's important. I think it's important to him too. Yes. Yes. I want to take one to do it. Yeah. But, yeah. It's a idea. but as you can see, we, can, right. we, we can't even get to all of our parks. I think this is a very progressive agenda, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, mm -hmm. And if we add that in, it's going to cut our time outdoors. Where that we can appear even do some time over the winter. Right. Um, right. Okay. When it's you know dark in Paris, but. I think we may want to, at some point, if we can't do it on the 26th, definitely set up a tour to Patrick mm -hmm. and, and maybe have Neil join us for that and be in town and kind of step through all the elements of it, right? I think I Actually, maybe right. we should go there first because that's on our agenda. That's, that's pretty critical. I don't want to blow up the schedule, but I'm just saying. I mean, it's, it's, but I feel like, it's, honestly, it's, I feel like we're spending so much time talking about Pear Tree. I think there's a lot of other parks that we need to be thinking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, I'm not suggesting about the maintenance. Uh, so. I'm not saying yeah, at the expense of anything else, I think maybe. Maybe so. some more to tone. You need time. Yeah, sorry. A couple of hours on Saturday exactly. morning on another Saturday. Okay. So does that work for yeah. everyone? Yeah. Then, in view of the fact that Cherry Lawn is so much bigger than, let's say, Tilly, would you allocate another 15 minutes there? Sure. We, we could if we think yeah. we can cover Tilly in 15 minutes. Okay. I think we could. I think, I think so, too. Okay. Just stroll right through the pathway. So we talk 8.30 to say 9.15 at Cherry, okay, and then 9.30 to 9.45 at Tilly Pond. Okay. And then we're going to go to McGuan. That's and good. McGuan. Really I tried to also do it sort of a, sort of mm -hmm. a loop as best as I could. <laughs> um, and then the plan was to just have a, a casual lunch um, at the Paddle Hut. Just so at Wee Beach? Yeah, just so Parks and Rec Committee members, you are certainly welcome 
join us. And it's a public meeting, so anybody can join us. Um, I guess we'll meet at Cherry Lawn and then maybe have a group open in the Yeah, that's fine. a little bit or even like TRR, yeah. you can, you can I could just. Yeah. You guys go like that. Yeah, go together. Yeah. Yeah. Even so a bike tour. People kind of live yeah. near each yeah. other. Yeah. <laughs> And then some of you would need a car or you could drive with somebody. That would be when the project gets done. Right. That should be great. Yeah, and then somebody can, who's got their car trail on, can take you home or whatever. Yeah, we so can do that. I can do that. Yeah, just so we're not driving around in nine different cars. Yeah, it's kind of silly. Which is kind of silly. Okay. Okay, so we'll need to post that because it is a special meeting. <laughs> October 22nd. October 26th. Okay, so I did want to um, cover that. Um, Pam, you dropped off our circulated potential yes. uh, list of our next meeting dates right. um, for next year. So again, the, the, the rooms have been reserved, so that's that's one of the options. Oh, they're t tentative. So well, they're tentative, but you for said the rooms right. are set aside. They are. Though. They are. <laughs> so the rooms are set aside if we stick with this date. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I see you got both February twelfth. And book both just in case, both. depending on okay. which one. Okay. Oh, we, we want to do the week we're not on vacation. So yes. we do the week we're not on vacation. So, so that's the 12th. Because yeah. 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 we have too many. So we're going to do the 12th? Yeah, not the 19th. I believe I did. Because that's not going to work. Oh, and you've also got the 26th here. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what do you do about the 26th? No, we just we just put them just because oh, we want it. Okay. Yes. So just so you guys can make a decision. The twelfth or the twenty sixth. Oh, I vote the twenty sixth. Oh, you want to do the twenty sixth instead of the um the twelfth? That's just my first one. Flexible. Will you have time for public comments? Uh, we will have a very few minutes for public comments. Okay, so we'll have this tentative and then people... It is on the agenda, correct? It is, but we have to get out of the room, so... Mm -hmm. the well, when, we when will we be able to have public comments? Um, at our next meeting. Okay, let's, let's yes, I would suggest a special meeting. Okay, let's yes, I would suggest it as well. We have two point five million dollars. Ignore people all the time. You are ignoring people. Absolutely, absolutely. This is disrespectful. We have sat here and listened to your meeting. This is disrespectful to your constituency. Definitely. Period. I could text. Okay, so we're doing the twelfth and the twenty sixth. Uh, we can decide. We, we don't have to decide on this this evening. Okay. Okay. But we can't step the room. We'll just keep the rooms reserved. But we know we don't need the... The 19th. The 19th. Right. We'll do the 19th. Okay. 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 So, all of that. Um, Pam did pass out the summary of written correspondence that we've received from residents. Um, somewhere, um, all of these items have been sent out. Every item has been sent out to all commission members. Yes. Yes. It's an updated. Program. Okay, so it's an updated. We won't go yeah. through it. Um, of course, we had many, um, many letters regarding the Pear Tree project. Uh, the split has been evenly um, against the project and then supported the project. Uh, that is factually oh, incorrect. Come on. <laughs> factually incorrect. I can speak to what Pam or I personally received. How do you know what I received? I know what I see in a poll that you guys put out. And I know what I, I you know what I, I this you're not having discussion. Oh, reporting on what emails we received. If you're incorrect, it needs to be noted. So we would like to see for and against. We have many, many, many comments of people from your poll. The overwhelming majority, 95 to 99 percent, are against your current project. I don't have a poll, so I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to finish my meeting in the next five minutes. Your meeting? This is a meeting yeah, of the people. Additionally, we have... This um, is a meeting of the town of Darien. This is not, this is not your meeting. meeting. It's her meeting. It's her meeting. Oh, it's my meeting. Um, additionally, we had a report on an incident um, 
and Cherry Long Park, which I think you all saw, which is very unfortunate. Yes. Um, yeah. It had to do with the off the leash dogs and the way that uh, members of the public treated other way members of the public. And also, we had a concern regarding um, use of them. Someone wanted to use the Wheat Beach Paddle Hunt, but we were not able to accommodate them and express concerns about that. Um, so, do you want to come in? How did, um, how did we resolve the issue of the step and the hill with the cherry lawn where the kids ride their bikes down? To yeah, I, I reported that to Jim. Okay. And, and I'm not certain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is taken I'm not certain, so I'll okay. follow, I will follow up on that tomorrow. All right. Because so I did send it. Yeah. Right. He's usually pretty darn good. He is good. He so is good. I, I would have a hard time believing he didn't take care of it. So that's not a bad thing? Yeah. Okay. Why, why weren't they able to get it? I was yeah. confused. Because during, she was willing by to the wait. time, yeah. right, by the time October falls around, it's paddle party season. Oh, so. So the only time the room is reserved during that time is for paddle play. Oh. But now residents have been enjoying the use yes. of that room. They wanted to just reserve the courts even when they weren't going to use them so that they could have the room. So when and that's against it, that's a, yeah. No, well, not for that reason. So Lori looked through the policy. The policy doesn't necessarily read um, that way, mm -hmm. but I think you, you've been on the commission yeah, long enough that when the paddle building was built, it was for paddle play. Right. So from really from November, when we start booking yeah, yeah. And from November through March, mm -hmm. it's typically just for paddle play. So, and so April through September, we're able to open it up to the residents for them to reserve the room. But they, weren't they willing to rent the courts though? They were, were they, or they, were, were they were willing to reserve the courts to hold them so that they could have the room, but they weren't going to use the courts. And that's happened to us in the past where paddle players will come down and then no one's playing on the courts. Course. And like, Why can't they I can't go in the, yeah. So it's a little bit of a gray area. It though. is a very gray area because the idea was that it was going to be, but if it's not going to be used for people that are playing paddle, and they're renting it, and they, in theory, say they're playing paddle to rent it. They, they, we we have had people yeah. take out the paddle permit and rent all the courts and have a party in the room and not play paddle. But obviously, we have an attendant on, and they know that that's what they did. It's not necessarily. So, you didn't like that they were doing it without you having paddle? Well, no, basically, weren't. It wasn't for paddle play, so again, I, I, I've inherited. It's just rules, weird because it's in a great area because we didn't have that envision that someone would be willing to rent all the paddle courts just to do that. Just to have. Because we thought the fee was high enough for that. That so. No, the room has gotten very well liked. Well liked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've started. You know, I've talked about doing an update to the rules in general. I started actually with the the appendix that yeah. deals with this. I get into Tam to take a look at. And oh, that's it. great. I think we, need to to the gym yeah, we need to clarify some of these some of yeah. these points. But you know, the concern is is you know the paddle season is, is limited, and the players are quite passionate and, and for them to reserve on a Sunday that. afternoon to have that not available to them. I see, because um, they haven't had an opportunity to rent it yet. Like people that really want to play paddle. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Got it. But it did re it did you know cause us to revisit the rules and look at them and how they were written. Well, you know, we, we didn't realize it was going to be that successful. We didn't write it, to be honest with you. Right. And that's part of the reason we do it. So kind of dried it up, some of these rules, yeah. right, in that way. So trying to learn and figure out a way around it. Um, we run out of time. Um, I will add that I have um, previously wanted to know, but I did um, get confirmation from our town administrator that public comment is actually not a required element every meeting. We're offering the as, as a courtesy. We have been taking extensive public comment, but we do have, um, hope everybody will appreciate this room. There's a lot going on with the Parks and Recreation Commission. We're all trying to serve the community, deal with all of the many issues of maintaining and operating and developing our parks. We have a lot we have to deal with. We are all volunteers, and we encourage you. We understand your comments. We read every one of them, but you know we are at our time for this evening.